And now, The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah, all of it. It's The Bonfire, coming to Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson with a fresh haircut. Don't think I didn't notice that. Did you notice? I did notice, dude. Did you know what I didn't notice? Who? The Lou's. Oh, Black Lou and White Lou not giving a shit about your haircut. You look great, honey. <laughs> yeah. uh, I noticed... DJ I, Lou said he's bald and doesn't give a shit about people's haircuts. I noticed, I knew, uh, noticed White Lou's n- new white Mets hat. That was nice. Thank you. Is it new? Yeah, yeah you, you just got gotta, a summer hat. You got to keep buying Mets hats to cover your baldness. I didn't know it was new, though. I assumed you just had like a zillion Mets hats. No, no. You just got a new one. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Looks really good. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't notice your, blue, your beautiful hair. Oh, he was going to say something cocky. He was going to say something dicky right there. He goes, so I didn't notice your blue bullshit hair. Yeah, he was going... What was the blue thing he was going to say, Dan? It was going to be something derogatory. He was going to go real Witsky, real 90s Witsky on He's you. getting the itch since we're not drinking today. I'm not going to stew you on a Monday, guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not drinking day. Tomorrow's drinking day. Yeah, everyone knows. While Jacob's gone, every day every is other, a siesta. Every other day, we just go Cinco de Mayo. Jacob goes, I don't like your guys' new segment where you take 15-minute naps from <laughs> 7.15 to 7.15. You don't understand good radio, Jacob. You know the problem with you, dude? Honestly, let's do it. Let's give out his. I'm off the wagon. Let's give him his address. You, <laughs> think, you think you're so fucking big and bad because you can hey, do kip ups and survive back surgery with no anesthesia? I'm gonna make myths about Jacob. Oh, dude, that'd be great if he was like, no, don't put me under. He, he just. I want to watch. He bit like a piece of wood the entire time. He, ah, old kid, he's just got a fucking belt around his fist and he's biting it. They huh? can't do this. I know. Uh, that's the new thing, by the way, being yelled out by fans lately. Yeah. They can't do this. They can't do this. And they love can't it. Do this. Yeah. I mean, someone asked if Jacob. People love really Jacob. That, People love Jacob. Someone asked if Jacob was really that meek, and I was like, "Do you think he's that good of an actor?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, Hi. Yeah. I'm Dan Soder from Showtime's Billions, <laughs> and when I get into the role of Mafi, I completely disappear. But Jacob Batat has been in character for over 27 years. His real name is Sean Moyman. Growing up in Los Angeles, he always knew he wanted to be a character actor. Jacob's not even Jewish. He goes, Jacob, what's your favorite word? Yes, shark. The airwolf. Oh. <laughs> what's your least favorite word? It's horrifically shitty. When you meet God in heaven, what do you hope he says? Those ass cheeks. <laughs> oh man, we have a whole Jacob soundboard. Oh man, it's like that movie with Johnny Depp where he dies and then his brain becomes a computer. Even if Jacob, uh, by the transcendence? way, transcendence. Yes, uh, the surgery was successful with Jacob, so he'll be back. He's just rehabbing. I'm gonna see him tomorrow. It was I was at the hospital Getting with him. Getting stronger, the, faster. The, the physical therapist took him out on a walk and came back, and she was like, "He, Jacob, was all drugged up." And the physical therapist, was like, "You're doing great. We just need to work on your confidence." Oh, that's and great. he goes, he looks up, he goes, "I'm fine." Yeah. <laughs> Would you say I'm ready to check out if I said I want to eat your box? There was a girl that I met this weekend at. At the comedy connection named Hillary, who is female Jacob. She's Jewish. She's into shipwrecks. She had neck spinal fusion surgery. Uh-uh. Loves NASCAR and is married to possibly the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. Oh, I isn't said, it ironic? Uh, yeah. Don't, don't you think? Don't you? Uh, that's fucking great. Yeah. It's like meeting the girl of your dreams and then meeting, and then meeting her super cool husband. <laughs> yeah. And like, isn't it ironic? It's all. Don't you think? It's all wolf teeth. When all you need is a Magdalene shark. <laughs> it's like rain on a winning day. It's like a season two of Airwolf when you didn't want it. <laughs> it's like 10,000 steaks when all you know how to do is bake. Uh, Bake yeah, so Hillary, like, after the show, they were super nice, and they were like, she's like, I'm female Jacob. And she told me that to be like, tell him that there's hope in the world. But I t- also, t- he just looks like a small French cook. <laughs> he really does, by the way. Uh, he My name is Jacob uh, Batot. I, is that I, a, I was on the Titanic. Is Jacob's neck brace sponsored by Penny Hardaway? Yeah. Why does it look all fucking like there's gel parts yeah. in it and everything? It looks so intense. It looks almost like an ascot. <laughs> he looks like an asshole, not a Hello, victim. My name is Jacob Batot. And these... All the great adventures of the Titanic. The Titanic, actually. What if I told you it didn't sink on its maid? Oh, well, you have to do the Jacob voice. <laughs> oh, I've never done young, prestigious Jacob. <laughs> As a boy, I would say. 
My father would tell me the ocean is actually the world and not land. Perhaps you didn't notice my ascot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tweet it out at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. Uh, so yeah, I met him up at Rhode Island. Rhode Island! Rhode Island. And then... Um, well, while you were in Rhode Island, and I was in Cleveland, Ohio. So this is pretty crazy. I did the late show Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. At um, Comedy Connection. A bunch of campers were out. Fuck, I forgot who yelled it to me, but I was smoking a joint outside, and someone just rolled down their window. This is like... Uh, I haven't felt this since before the internet, but this lady rolls, ah, fuck, I'm so sorry for your name, Laura, I want to say, she rolls down her window and she goes, hey, hey, Soder, Michelle Wolf killed, like she just yells it at me, she goes, Michelle Wolf, apparently, I'm, I'm reading Twitter and apparently she killed on the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I was like, yeah, I, I, then we found out she got killed, yeah, and then it was, there was on. a sniper, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that was like a weird way to hear. That was info. how you found out about yeah. the speech at all. You weren't on Twitter or anything. So no, they just yelled I don't have Twitter. You. I don't have Twitter on my phone anymore. Well, that's so, like, it was pretty well, so that girl was like, "Oh yeah, they're saying Michelle Wolf did really well." Yeah, what's really funny is uh, I saw. I didn't know when it was for some reason. I thought yeah. it happened because on, on Thursday I saw a tweet that went out already from somebody going like, "Michelle Wolf unimpressed." <laughs> And by the way, the only reason I saw the tweet, it was like, Michelle, unimpressed. Maybe uh, it would be fun to watch the Correspondence Dinner if it was hosted by, uh, and the people were me, I forget the second, and Zach Amico. Oh, for the, for the, I, I go, no. But then I was like, wow, I wonder, but I guess she said, I guess she said unimpressed, like it went bad, but it didn't even fucking, it didn't even happen yet. Yeah, it happened point. Saturday night. I think you were just saying unimpressed in general? That's kind of a weird, like, early approach for that. I mean, that's just fucking, uh... It's it's just um, the internet. That's what Twitter is. Yeah, people of being no. like, "You suck." Sure. You, I mean, trust me. And which is going to get us to a thing that I was I heard, so excited to do with you. Uh, but I, we'll, I heard a, a whole bunch um, about it. I heard uh, good. I heard no one said bad. Uh, other than I heard people reacted bad. Yeah. yeah I heard yeah. it was really funny. Everything from it was really funny to like it was like fine. It was like well, it, 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 like it, like it did well. But if it makes sense, like the critique of the joke writing is like a critique that's like you can you can make that argument anytime but as far as it being like good material and like funny and stuff and like did she do well like absolutely she did very well yeah, she, ran, I, she ran. I ended up listening to it finally and or watching it rather and yeah. uh, she looked great and she uh it did great in the room yeah and it was uh oh funny jokes about but, the subject you know then it spills on over to the old bipartisan fucking twitter and it's just funny to watch both sides be completely fucking idiots about it. Because what it is, is they hired her to be a comic. She went out. She ran the set around the city. If you were a comic in the city, you saw the set before she did it. That's how they all do it. That's SNL monologues and all that shit. Um, <clears throat> so Michelle ran it, and I knew most of the jokes. And it was like, oh, it's going to be fun. Just a lot of funny jokes. So you don't know how people are going to react. You know that as a comic. Sure. You don't know how people are going to react to this. So when I heard she killed, I was like, good. People got it. They got it. It was all jokes. There was stuff that I know that she took out that was more about people's looks, about President Trump's looks and shit like that, that I knew she pulled because she was like, I don't want to do that. She's like, I'm trying to hit both sides. And I knew she was going to hit the media. What's interesting about Michelle's jokes, and this is more the right. What, what, what bummed me out about the right is how they reacted as there are those people that are always like, these fucking soft ass liberals get all butt hurt when you say the wrong word. But then Michelle had a set and they were like, that's offensive. You made, you mocked her eye makeup. And it's like, aren't you the motherfuckers that are always like these soft liberals? I mean, that to me upset me from the right. What fucking infuriated me from the left and what, it's something that I fucking hope no one forgets is that Michelle kicked CNN. New York Times, all these people right in the balls and called them out. It was like, you're profiting off all this shit. Mm-hmm. All this craziness, you're fucking profiting from. And Michelle uh, did it as one of her bits. And instead of them being like, ah, you fucking got us, they turned that fucking ultra-liberal attack of like, well, you went after another woman. And as a woman, it's like, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. Didn't even You guys that. can't fucking take your medicine. You can't take the fact that Michelle fucking nailed it and called you out on the fact that you're profiting off all this shit. And that was the New York Times and CNN specifically that came after Michelle being like, that was wrong that you did that. And it's like, man, even the fucking lady that runs the press dinner that put this all together back down and was like, that was that was cruel. That wasn't jokes. It's like, motherfucker, you hired a comic. It's crazy to me. Dan's ramped up. Did well, I mean, him? this is like one did, of my best friends. Did you see him get a... I just like, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. But you, at one point, were doing the... Uh, like, you were... 
<laughs> fucking uh, mediating like a rap battle in a church uh, basement. Uh, hey, oh, these uh, motherfuckers uh, popping off crazy uh, at the mouth. No, which is crazy at the mouth. Um, no, you're what, everything you're saying is correct. Um, it is, but uh, see, like Michelle has a tweet out right here where it says, "Why are you guys making this about Sarah's looks?" And there's the joke because Mika from Morning Joe went against her too. These are all these people that are like, just as a wife and a well, mother. She said to Mika, that was great. She's like, it's like a me too that worked out. Yeah. How great of a <laughs> joke is it. that? It was great. It is, it, oh, like, see, her and the co host. Yeah. Right? yeah. And she goes, that's a me too that worked out. And then she's like, you attacked a woman's look. Fuck you. You can't handle. Like, here's the thing about our show that I think is pretty open is we make fun of ourselves and I'm willing to be made fun of. Sure. As the basis of this show, of course, this show is that I'm a fucking giant idiot, and we're, we're both we're just fun idiots. No, well, I don't think that's not the show. So you're a giant idiot. Okay, well I hate myself. <laughs> I was gonna say what? <laughs> guys, by the way, I was nodding with you. Into, I, was, I, I nodded with you through, and I was like, wait a second. I, by think, the way, the show, I think the basis of the show is that we're both here fun. No, but wait, my, so did you know you're funny and talented? <laughs> <laughs> no, I lift, my shirt lifts up. You just see a bunch of scars, and you go, dude, are you a <laughs> are you a body? Cutter? I'm a big old dumb dumb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just saying it's uh, this is it's infuriating because I know that Michelle wrote him just as good jokes and then I watch my friend just get bashed for shit where it's like where people are putting words in her mouth sure. and that shit's like and, but it's like I feel that. like everybody gets bashed for everything nowadays and I, I watched it I was very uh, I was proud to know her I was excited I know that that's a situation you go into where you know it's terrifying. a very specific audience and you're doing a very specific it's also terrifying, thing and, first of all, so I mean the fact that uh, I mean I very much remember Michelle like doing check spots at stand up New York. Yeah. Like I didn't know like and then she was on uh she was writing for Seth Meyers and then Daily Show, right? And she was like uh getting all this work and then she was working everywhere and you know, I so I've watched her trajectory and you know, I've paid attention to her comedy like in different phases and she's gotten like she's fucking really talented, man. So yeah. it's impressive uh, however long she's been doing comedy to be able to go up there and do that. And the other people have done her like Jimmy Kimmel's and yeah, people Seth like, Myers. like yeah, fucking long Colbert. time fucking hosts. My, my gripe with this and not with Michelle at all whatsoever. It's unfortunately she was thrust into a situation in the bigger conversation to me is how silly this all feels like the social, yeah. like social media really makes everyone seem unbearable. Uh, how, how do you show even me? I'm, Oh, what were you going to say? Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, like, even me, I fucking... Dennis Miller had a tweet where she's like, she's a terrible person. She's right. a terrible person, babe. Hey, I'm babe. Gonna, hey babe. Listen, I'm going to write a joke in the enough time it took to take... Yeah, it's... I, I don't want to jump too far to Dennis, but we're, gonna, we're oh, going to Dennis yeah. Miller for sure. No, I... Get ready for a lot of shitty Dennis Miller impressions. The point I'm making is more... Uh, it, it makes us all children. If you're a teenager in the world right now, how do you look... I mean, our president is saying things like, heard it was a big old silly dumb boar fest of people who were saying, <laughs> like everything's, and, and by the Every, way, everyone just sort of everyone accepting that. But everyone also but, talks but, like but that. But everyone, yeah, but here's the thing. No that, one's supposed to be like this. I heard it was a stinkeroo. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like, even Michelle's like now like engaged in it. And you, and by the way, I've been sucked into it on much smaller scale. Yeah. Uh, just a person who saw me live that was saying something that I've been drawn in. and I'm I'm learning to get better at it and not really engage it because whatever. If you don't like, if you don't like, if you don't like me, don't, don't listen. That's fine. You don't and kind of go away. Well, let me just let me get this thought out because I, I'm that's what I'm. And Michelle's kind of locked into where she's like answering like each per not each but you know the celebrity people who are like how dare you she's like defending herself on yeah. social media but it's just it's showing our ass like how yeah. ridiculous this all looks it really is showing our like social media really should be for like hey everyone catch Dan Soder at yep. so and so hey Dan's show was great hands to the fact that celebrities are making themselves so touchable with with dumb shit like this so I was thinking so, exactly about this because this is a point that I wanted to make to get to a, uh, was Back in the 60s, if there would have been Facebook, like Bob Dylan, someone must have done a bit about that, but like, there's no oh, way yeah, that yeah. Bob Dylan, if, you know how... Tom Rhodes actually has a great joke he said about the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech, you know, it's all, the way it's caught, it's the way it's caught, he goes, today it would be on YouTube with like comments underneath of it, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, fuck this, you know, whatever, I forget what he said, but it was like really fucking... But it really is, it just ruins kind of, you're, you're getting too exposed, everyone's too exposed, because the 90s were about, late 90s, early 2000s, when reality TV came out, it was like, oh look, you're watching watching people that you never got this access to and that became a thing where it begot fucking Facebook and Twitter and all this shit and now you're seeing it all now you're seeing it all and that's like I, I could have guessed 
Which brings us to the next thing is I could have guessed. You know, Den- Dennis Miller is a right wing political pundit now. Like I know what that is, mm-hmm. and I don't even follow him on Twitter. But another comic uh, retweeted it, and I saw that he called Michelle Wolf a terrible person, and it just immediately my feeling was like, dude, you're a comic, or you were a comic. You, like, how are you? If someone that I don't respect as a comic writes a joke that I don't like, I wouldn't be like, you're a shitty person, because I'd be like, oh, you were doing your job. I and and Dennis Miller and him and a zillion other people. I don't understand the M- Mika girl from Morning Joe. Like they're all, they're just airing this thing that could be done. Like I don't understand like these public. Why do you want what, your what, fucking world? Trying so to, like, she was that's attacked. Why, yeah, well, because like what's that? She was the butt of a joke. And so uh-huh. then she goes on and she tries to throw Michelle under the bus. And I love Michelle, really. She only replied to three things. She very much picked her battles. And what she's saying is like, I didn't attack this woman's looks. You guys are still like, coming Sarah after me for attacking thing. her looks. Yeah. But that's, she didn't even do that. That's the Sarah Huckabee thing. I'm even saying this like everyone you... I mean, this is the equivalent of mm-hmm. uh, after, you know, the roast of Snoop Dogg. That like, you know, Snoop Dogg sends a letter to like Jeff Ross <laughs> yeah. and fucking yeah. B. Arthur hey, was, and hey, fucking, you know, whoever else is on the fucking dais. Jeff Rizzle, it comes at me with a great surprise that you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I went there to have a good time, baby. I wanted to smoke a little weed and then Jeff Rizzle just come on with a big dizzle make me feel stupizzle. I didn't like any of that. West Side Crip Gang Bang. Gang Bang? But it really gang Bang, is, rep set. It is that LBC. It, it's that silly, and I think it just shows that. So instead of just going, oh, everyone who got the president one should go, and if he doesn't go, he should be like, you know, when people come out and they go, oh, he should do a joke about this and that, she goes, she goes they were funny joke, you know, she mm-hmm. did a great joke, you know, it, it looks as a as a kid growing up in the world right now, wouldn't you feel much more secure and safe if the president, even if you know everything Trump's done and did and is doing, yeah, if at the end of it, wouldn't you be like, oh. That's awesome. That's what he should have done. Was right. Like I heard the the comedian that was very funny, and uh, you know, I, I I didn't want to be there for personal reasons, but blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Even if he doesn't want to go like that. It's always he's like, he's like I'm not going. You guys can have your stupid dinner by. And it's like really, it's presented that way. <laughs> have your stupid dinner. I don't care. I'm gonna go have a rally in Michigan. And in Michigan, he's like, can you believe those idiots are over there having <laughs> a stupid dinner, making fun of people? What a bunch of losers. But see, and this, we're here in West Virginia. Yeah. But this is how fucking this is how fucked up shit is that everyone thinks they have to pick a side. Where even if like uh, there's a lot of people that'll be like, how are you mocking the president? Where it's like. It's a joke, dude. We're making fun of the fact that the most, one of the most influential people in the world is reacting like a mad eighth grader who didn't get invited to a birthday party. When they're going like this, I heard the comedian was P.U. and puts his finger <laughs> over his nose and you're like, you have nuclear access. I can't even say nuclear. That's, a, that's why I'm an idiot. Nuclear. Nuclear. Um, <laughs> there's new, can we do words of the day from now on? Nuclear. Yeah, or you can teach me. You can nuclear, fucking. You can sure. talk the mountain man oh, out yeah. of me. <laughs> you want that for me? Yeah. Uh, the White House correspondence dinner was a failure last year, but this year was an embarrassment to everyone associated with it. The filthy comedian. To- That's what I mean. Like the filthy comedian. Like. He's, That'd be great if Michelle. Uh, but, but it's like, but it's like Donald but Trump's if, friends with Howard Stern, who's like, you know, like, like a good But comment. if Michelle would have gone up there and gone, "Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to tell you about my red pussy." Yeah. Oh, guess, Donald guess. Trump's dick is so small. Hit it. Goes, oh. Dick, this goes good because I shaved my pussy for this. Oh. She goes, yeah. She goes. Ah, oh, CNN's here. They can suck this red clip. Kick it. <laughs> okay. uh, dude, uh, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers For Donald Trump to call a comedian uh, filthy It's like she made the point in her joke She's like he said it first guys yeah. <laughs> Like I'm joking he's not It doesn't even matter This is it, this is, it, is, it, com- this is us as comedians Taking the side of a comic So if you're in your fucking car right now And you're like it's equal sides What about Obama It's, it's like totally this equal is sides about, yeah. It's totally equal sides Because the left is fucking it's just pro- as dumb The stupidest doing thing this shit. The left and right The stupidest stupid as it's pick it's being picked apart in a way it shouldn't be picked apart Mm -hmm. it's she went up there the job of that that's the job there is to roast politics yes is to go up and make fun of that's the job defined but by the way this is where this is what fucking pisses me off is the lady that runs the white oh oh (laughs) the white house the lady that runs well I was pointing to the screen I'm a giant (laughs) I know I just got nervous oh Oh, oh, shit oh Oh, Danny Stone's getting hoi yo you call that bread you call that bread you call that bread on your tongue 
<laughs> you want to start battle rapping? Um, but the lady that runs the White House Correspondents Dinner came out uh, last night and was like, Sue. Yeah, old Sue. <laughs> old Sue. I bet her name's Sue. Old Sue Paper. Uh, she said, like, it, they're supposed to be light jabs. And she was just a little too rough. And you're like, maybe. Okay. All right. But even so. But she wasn't, here's I mean, watching Stephen Colbert years ago do his speech right in front of President Bush. And that's what we're missing from she this. Had the, is there something about saying it to their face? She or? had the dirt. I mean, she had the dirtiest one for sure. But it was because, it, I mean, the, the, the what was brought to the table there. Mm-hmm. Was Donald Trump's most famous, you know, public fuck up? Is that tape coming out of him saying "grab him by the pussy"? I mean, that's what. Well, I'm fucking a porn star and paying her off to not talk. That's what women. <laughs> Guys, that's what. Without a rubber yeah, w- women hate much more. The you can just if girls will be so into you if you're rich, you can just grab him by the pussy. Uh, women are much more angry about that than like paying a girl like a lot of women could also probably say like well i'd fuck donald trump for a payoff money why, why not Who i'm a dude and i would <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying that's a like, lot of girls would let him grab him by the pussy yeah. <laughs> you let, i understand but but i'm saying that's more of a blanket he's saying to the world it's not a woman saying like shit you can grab my pussy for a million dollars it's him, it's, <laughs> it's him saying don't you know, it's uh, no big deal i can just go grab him by the pussy and they basically won't do shit about it it's kind of what he was you know the, the 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 message he was sending there but can but, we when if michelle ever Makes the news again. Def Jam Michelle has to come out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. yes. Why why presidents fuck like this? Oh, here's a non disclosure announcement. Here's an NDA. Black presidents fuck like this. Michelle, I'll be right back. King it! <laughs> but it really is, it's brought up to be like it's just like divisive as shit. Like everyone, yeah. everybody goes. Well, no, here's, like just, it really should just be a bunch of adults. That's a segment of look. For Michelle, at the end of the day, I guess the blow up it, it will be uh, beyond valuable for her, so it's fine. Well, her new show, The Break, starts on uh, Netflix in three weeks, so, there so you I'm go. saying that it, she'll be fine. It, it'll it'll be good for her more than uh, more than bad, but it's just I, I said I'm disheartened by the entire vibe of that. It's so like everyone's like, can you believe she? It's like everyone just whimpering and whining publicly. Like, do it on your show. Like, like, like social media, man, just putting it out and then it gets picked up by news. It's, it's like, yeah. uh, I, I swear to you, I feel like 90% of our news anymore is like entertainment bullshit. That was crazy, man. When I was, and that's when a I was major in, number, but I mean, no, no. way too much of our news is entertainment based. When I, uh, I, um, I took you know journalism classes, and one of the things that they brought up was back in the fifties or sixties, um, the news was seventy five percent current events and politics, and twenty five percent celebrity news and gossip. And then by like two thousand and three, it had switched to seventy percent entertainment, thirty percent current issues well anchorman 2 p- goes into that whole idea where christine that was fake from. news <laughs> no 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 I that was actual movie. really fake news uh, i mean that the example of she it goes, is like i grew up watching ron burgundy <laughs> <laughs> it was when cable i think when and maybe not 2003 it was a little more time yeah. but cable news coming into play all these 24-hour news cycles where it wasn't just like you watched the five o'clock news or the seven o'clock well, news now they had to like fill they had to get a bunch of filler. Well, something that Michelle touched on that they fucking, I think, really pissed off, and that's why Mika and all them came after. Well, Mika had a joke about her, but I was saying um, CNN and New York Times going after Michelle, it's because she kind of thinks, think of like, you guys profited, you're profiting from all this. Let's not forget that. And so they, and Jay, when you're like, why would they tweet about that? Because when, when you have a divisive tweet, that immediately causes people to go read your shit and so they want to read it. You know what I mean? No, like they're course. generating. I'm saying the fact that people give a shit so much. I know like, it sucks. Well, like, it just shows you. What you people. feel like these, especially the political people. Yeah. You feel like, don't you have something to fucking do today? <laughs> like, you should have something but to do today to worry about. You got roasted, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. We broadcast, man. We, we we put ourselves out there and we roast shit, and it comes back at us constantly. And you just kind of like, all right, whatever. You know, like you, there was, you uh, move on. These things are so like. Your dinner's so stupid. Everyone's sitting there, boring, filthy comedian. It's yeah. like, why would he even give a shit that much? You know what I mean? Either say it's like, I didn't see it, or you can go like, you know, it's like, I'm sure the dinner was nice. I'm sure it was fine. You know, I hope everyone's... Like, why when you make it seem you're like your job is bigger than arguing with fucking celebrities and shit? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's stupid. It makes, us feel, it makes me feel stupid to other countries. I mean, really silly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's starting to be a worldwide thing because 
I don't know if we're setting the example, but like everyone's just sure we are with, with just with social media and everyone's tweeting it. But um, Sarah McPants is a good idea that she's prepping for next year's White House Correspondents Dinner and just being nice. Weren't you and I doing that on the phone? We were doing apologetic. Uh, she's hosting. Why well, Sarah McPants says I'm prepping to host next year's White House Correspondents Dinner. But seriously, guys, can you just stop being so good looking and smart? That's really what they want. <laughs> You're just making us all look bad, and don't even get me started on intelligence. But I think integrity. Sarah McPants also did she write that we should get Shonda Pierce? I mean, she really is the person who should do it. Oh, she is. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, did she tweet that out? Please, <laughs> oh, please join me. me and Shonda Pierce for next year's inspirational warm hug coddling dinner. I have a gun. But by the way, <laughs> that's fine. Do Realistically. We do that? That's what it should always have been, and it's what it should always be. Yeah. It's not going to be... But, you know, they always go exactly like, Obama took the ball busting better. He didn't get it anywhere near the level that Trump's going to get it. Not even sort of. Or W. And W actually took it great. I mean... He went all the time. Colbert George W. Bush, Bush was rough. Like, Colbert really gave and it Bush? to... Him. Yeah. And he went, uh, but he was, there. he was there. And he was there, and it was right in front... I mean, Donald Trump not... Go- he's calling everything a disgrace. Like, it really... I mean, what a... To just stomp on tradition. And, and be Shut a up, baby about things. I Shut up, even, I don't even care about the tradition. She I'm went saying, after a woman's looks. What if I go heal on Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tan it. You know what? I think there's a market in this. I, I'm I'm worried about just how silly we look. That's all it is. That, 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 well, people, that this is like any kind of new... Like, Michelle did a great job, and she should have gotten the kudos for it, and, and whatever, like, you know, uh, media picks that up is fine. And then you could have reviews and everything, but, like, the, the big debate, I mean, that's... I mean, this is. I mean, we. I promise you are the four thousandth radio show talking about it. Yeah. So I'm saying. Not, so I'm saying. The like, thing that I want to the fact that it makes that, Michelle. the no. fact that it shouldn't. The, sure. the kind of news should only be like, what a funny thing. You know what I mean? So it's, it's good. It's better for her that created controversy. But I'm annoyed by the but controversy. Is it, isn't it, it weird now though that we're starting to get so evolved on learning of these marketing tools that even when Kanye was going crazy last week, I heard about. Nine to ten people online go, this is a marketing tool. This is a marketing tool. He's doing this to get attention so people will watch his album. Cypher Sounds had a great one where he's like, Kanye, just drop the album. Stop with all this extracurricular shit. Yeah. Stop saying that you love Trump to fucking get people mad so they're you know, on your shit. You're not going to be at your home, like all that stuff. And it's like, are we, we're that evolved now where we're starting to see the marketing techniques where you're like, oh, so you you have an album coming, so that's why you're doing but this. But who's evolved? But even it's like... You mean society in general? Because we're not, because it works. No, but it's, I'm saying like, yeah, no, it still works, but now we're starting to see it and we're still, we're seeing it, but we're still, like, it's still affecting us. It, it's a oh, weird yeah, place sure. to be in. It's a weird place to be in because it's like, you know what the trick is, but well, the trick tro- is still working. It's, it's like a reverse trolling of some sort because that's what happens when people, I mean, even Michelle people, has a show coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so it's, it's like, this is a marketing thing. And it's, it's, it's not going to be bad for her as far as that goes. It really won't. But I just think. Again, I'm just annoyed by like the people like uh, how dare anyone who having like a how dare she or yeah, any over putz. opinion about it. It's like you should just like all like it was probably the most entertaining 20 minutes of the entire fucking boring ass event. Yeah, you know, and like she did her thing, and it was like it should have been like just you know re- review it, review it and say you don't think it was funny. Re- everyone being so appalled or how does this happen, and the president's commenting on it. It's like fucking do something. But you know man. what's crazy about that is you know who that gets uh, excited about watching it? The people that didn't give a shit. Yeah. People, <laughs> most people would be like, if you were like, that was all right. Shit's Dana good White, dude. It's Dana White. Yeah. It's all, everyone's like, uh, Fight promoter. I mean, Everyone's a fight, a fight promoter. promoter. Yeah, they, they, they're trying to sell tickets to a thing that's not happening. It's crazy. We live in the Don King United States, where he's like, everything must happen. <laughs> Mika Brzezinski versus Michelle Wolf, only in America. Well, I know we uh, both. Uh, every I think I speak for everybody in the room here. We're all very proud of Michelle. Yeah. Uh, she's a friend of the show. She's uh, absolutely hilarious. She killed it, and this is uh, going to only be uh, the beginning of good things for her with with uh, stuff branching off this i promise that yeah. and uh let's take our first break dan yeah we have uh justin silver's gonna come in at oh, seven o'clock the the seven o'clock hour the beast master himself and we come back we have some fun stuff i have some fun stories to tell good shit uh me and bobby kelly have a little bet going on i'm gonna announce when we come back and uh by the way i will say one of the criticisms that made me laugh hardest about michelle that i saw online she, mm-hmm. she kind of does look like well vicky <laughs> She does like Whoa, Vicky. That is absolutely for sure. She does. It's one of my favorite. It's one of Michelle's my closest got, closest people to me in my life. Also, and because Michelle's got a little bit of lamb chop in her. Yeah, lamb chop. Whoa, well, Vicky. She's half ginger, half lamb chop. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> well, she did a good job. Let's actually, take a Michelle. Break. Actually, Michelle Wolf looks like if Shari Lewis and Lamb Chop had a baby. She looks like the child of Shari Lewis. And lamb. 
And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Eastern New York's only classic rock. It's the Wolf. Oh. It's time to get Kick the let out. We're Snoocher and the Dude. Snoocher and the Dude? Fuck yeah, dude. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series 6, M95. <laughs> Fart Box and Beret. Yeah, Mornings. <laughs> uh, 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 8 to 12. Yeah. Serious XM95. Lou Witzke with the uh, Mark Norman Led Zeppelin mashup. Keeping right? your forklift moving forward all day. Yeah, it's 95 Serious XM. The yeah. bop, bop, bop beat. Uh, it's <laughs> rock music to fall asleep on opiates to. <laughs> You're listening to the Cougar. You guys are listening to Nod Rock right here <laughs> uh, <laughs> on WJNK, the junk. Of New York. Yeah, northern upstate New York's only opiate rock station. <laughs> Are you always tired? Well, it's time to wa- wa- wake up and get the lead out. It's five o'clock <laughs> shake jams. Are you having your shakes? Smash! 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 It's time to shake them out. To Stone Temple Pilots on the junk. <laughs> Caller 95 wins two tickets to see Jackal over at the Wolf Den in Paramus. Yeah. That's right. Original lineup. <laughs> Don't Jackal. Don't forget to sign up for the junk crew and get your free month supply of methadone. <laughs> get yourself a Sirius XM95 tourniquet. Make those veins pop, 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 pop. And our annual ass to ass Christmas. It's time to Watch get your... the let out and get the junk in. Watch girls go ass to ass for a little bit of black tar. <laughs> Suck it, it. Oh, fuck it, whatever you charge. Could, it's ten dollars. We could do this. Oh man! Right here on KWHR, the Lord of San Diego. And dude, you gotta call it the junk. The junk is the WJNK. WJNK, the junk. Uh, hey, what are, we have to give our DJ names. Oh, dude, uh, I'm Pop Mark Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, and I'm Scott. Oh yeah, just <laughs> the regular guy, Scott. Uh, the MC at um, Comedy Connection all weekend, Eric, is a big camper, and he did his Dan Soda impression of me, and I was like, I was waiting to get really offended by it because he's like, I do a Dan Soda impression, and I was like, All right, do it, and I was like, kind of grip my teeth, like here it comes, and he, he just does, he goes. Dude, and I went, yeah, that's good. <laughs> really right, good. Right when he did it, I went, fuck, that's dude? good. Yeah, he goes, that's whenever good. Jay says something and you get excited, you go, dude. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, <laughs> that is what I do. Uh, oh, if you want to do your impression for Dan Soder, no, he's going to be oh. a helium <laughs> in Portland, Oregon, May 10th through May 12th. As for- of right now, I'll be in Vancouver at Comedy Mix. I have not heard anything. Um, I should know. I'll know definitely by tomorrow, but there's a small chance I'd have to cancel Vancouver Comedy Works this weekend. Hey, Canada, chill out! I might be up there this Thursday through Saturday. Sorry, Jay, to interrupt your plugs. I just had to get real. I had to get real on these moments. Well, I got nothing going on, so I'll definitely... Oh, really? I'll definitely have my ass at Caroline's this weekend. Well, how about this? Thursday Mm -hmm. through Mm -hmm. motherfucking Sunday, New York City, Big Jay's going to be at Caroline's. Go get tickets, bigjcomedy.com, if you live in the tri-state area. Please, God. I will beg every time we do this one, particularly. Please, God, come come to the you show. Wanna, well, you want to pack it out. It's New York. And it's going to be fun shows. Out. The Beastmaster will be there. Legion of Skanks members. Uh, Mike Fenoya. We have Mike Fenoya, Justin, on some shows. Dave Lewis on some other shows. And if I have to cancel Vancouver, I might be there. Dan Soder might be coming through. Oh, of course, Hanging this weekend. Different shows uh, stretched throughout the weekend. We're going to have... Uh, DJ Lewitsky, Black Lou, and his white princess. And lowered down from the Raptors, a neck brace wearing Jacob Batot. <laughs> Jacob Batot. <laughs> brought- <laughs> Hi, everyone. I ascend to you. Uh, this is my ascot. Uh, Jacob, I don't I'm know. I'm Airwolf. I don't know if Jacob can or not. Um, but he will try, I'm sure, if he can. But uh, DJ Lou, you're going to be there, right? Fuck yeah. Saturday. Hells. Saturday night. Definitely. Fuck, fuck, fuck yeah, yeah, bro. Fuck yeah, bro. He's ready to go to play rights and get ripped. Oh, uh, hell yeah, bro. Real quick, uh, I have to shout out one last fan from Providence. She gave us a great package of gifts. Suzanne, 
Thank you again. I'm wearing the uh, I'm rocking the Four Horsemen shirt that she got me, but she got Christine a, a shirt. Blink One Eighty Two shirt. I'm wearing the cock yeah. ring she sent. Yep, there it is. It's so big, it fit. She knew it. No, she sent me. Uh, that was all. From, that was all from Suzanne, right? Yeah, there. it was all from Suzanne. So yeah, she sent me beard grooming stuff, yeah. which was very nice. Uh, a, a nice Norelco Trim. uh, trimmer. Yeah, get those balls uh, right. Oh yeah, no, no, no! I bicked the nut set. That's so crazy. I, I don't know why you think that's crazy. Because I touched your nuts; they're so smooth. They're almost reptilian. Christine, would you want it any other way? No. All right, well, reptilian I, would be scaly. They're not she's scaly. Per- she's, they are soft. It is really like she's our. It's like fresh taffy. I know it really is. It's nuts. It's like, like it's, like, it's always being churned. I'm you do have silly putty nuts. Yeah, <laughs> silly putty balls. They're nice. I'm surprised it's a shave and not a wax. Yeah. When you feel it. Yeah. That's how much I do it. Would you whittle it? <laughs> By the way, Give that me. was a good half wink. You, were, you, were kind of, you did the, oh man, there's so much things I want to talk to you about this that happened this weekend. Oh buddy, you, we have a bunch. Then how about this? I don't know. Do you want to, our guest is here. Justin's here. He's out yeah, there. Just I bring saw, him in. I saw him pop in. Boy, how about this? Why don't we just fucking, we want to recap each other. We, we had crazy weekends. Why, should we take break two like this quick? Is that is that crazy? And then we'll have Justin come in and we'll just ride it out for a while. Sure, why not? Is that I mean, fine? Jacob's not here. We can do whatever the fuck we want. So fuck we do want. you guys want to do an old live read? And guess what, guys? When <laughs> we come back, when we come back, we're going to listen to an obnoxious amount of another Led Zeppelin song because yeah. here's where we get the let out right here on your home of Led Zeppelin and all classic rock. It's Sirius XM 95. The ba 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 uh, WJNK. Yeah. Christine, what are you making this face for? Nothing. Oh, you think it's insensitive? No, it's fine. Okay. What? Nothing. Nebraska's only heroin rock station. You're listening to the needle. WNDL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 The Needle Exchange. WSPN. It's the spoon. <laughs> the burnt spoon of New York City, everybody. Okay. Uh, heroin rock station. So my favorite thing we've done in a while. I still don't know what Christine's face was about. What are you upset? I was what just was... super quick to take a break. As well. Oh, that was the only thing that we can best this is find. Like, I mean, we can, uh, by the way, I'll do the beat. We took a I'll break do... like five minutes ago. I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do the beat in New York for fucking I'll do it for 36 seven, hours. Seven more minutes and that's when we have to take a break I'll tell you this I'll miss some meetings tomorrow to keep doing it I'll just go through the night I don't like the same thing I have to yell at Jacob for once in a while you can't make your goofy faces we went long on the first segment that's why one of the segments is going to have to be shorter that's how it works when we do one segment long and we want to go really long with Justin because he's sensual and we wanted to go long with sensual ass Justin well you know what? here's what I can kill some time with speaking of sensuality hit, hit me with it I let me get my glasses on last night decided to uh, make a bet okay. because tonight as we know after the live bonfire which I'm not going to be able to watch it live but uh, I will not be checking the internet so mm-hmm. I'll be fine oh, no one will be taking you down for your stance on no, 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 Trump no. no not at all I will not be checking the internet but I am uh, going to be watching the game one of round two NBA playoffs Philadelphia 76ers at the Boston Celtics I made a bet with Robert Kelly Last night on the phone, okay. he will confirm, I hope, that well, he thinks now that I possibly monetarily am the mush when we bet because we bet the Super Bowl. So he's saying that you beat he him. He goes, something about me. He gave one of the funniest descriptions that I will let him recreate if he'd like to uh, on social media or Instagram, mm-hmm. whatever, because it was the funniest thing of what he was describing my whole career. He's yeah. like, I shouldn't have made it. <laughs> Nobody wanted to like me. I don't have the it factor. That's why I'm not Kev or Michelle Wolf. He said, or these poor Amy Schumer. He goes, it was why I'll never be them. He goes, but something about them just keeps me around. And whatever that thing is, that makes me defy the odds and not be pumping gas in Philadelphia is what the reason why he feels he will lose a bet with me if we bet big money. He goes, let's make He's, a small money you're bet. You're his Rocky. He goes, let's do a smaller bet. So I agreed to $50. Okay. I threw it out. So you want to make $50? He goes, let's do $50 and Dead. a back rub. Oh. And then that just evolved into a sensual back rub. So, yeah. And it's going to happen on one of our two shows, depending on who wins. But either on the bonfire or on, uh, you know what, dude, YKWD. Yeah. Um, his hilarious podcast he does. Check it out one at riotcast.com. The loser will be giving the other one a sensual 
sensuous. And I mean candles, oils, um, maybe maybe chest to back. I will say I will be there regardless. Back because cracks. I think Bobby will let me come on if you lose to watch you give him a massage. Also, it would be good for us to kind of have a representation there that isn't in the massage game. If I lose, by the way, I'll give Robert Kelly a full to completion through the underwear HJ. Through the underwear? Mm-hmm. Under the elastic? So that's the elastic's how resting on your forearm? That's how comfortable I am. If he'll up the ante on this bed at all, to completion. I will say that because that's how sure I am the Sixers are going to run away with the series. You th- would you even give it a game count? No. Okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to give him a hand job, Dan. Smart. <laughs> would you give it a game? Would you say right down to the points spread? I go, I go maybe. No. I don't know. Guess this the final hand job. Guess the final score. The total score. of The elimination game. <laughs> I am upping the ante. I don't know uh, if Bobby's gonna uh, support that, but I'm telling you that the uh, the Sixers are gonna win this, and me and Robert Kelly have the bet. The bet is in fifty dollars. Uh, and, a sensual. and a sensual, sensual, I'm going to say full body massage, but Damn. we can keep it to his back if he wants. Dude, we'll get a table. Oh, yeah. We'll do a whole thing. Yeah, we'll... Uh, whoever doesn't know that, I think should have to wear, like, white scrubs. All those things can be negotiated. Yeah, we'll just play pleasant music the whole time if it's in here. Oh, there's a spa channel right here at Sirius XM. Oh, we'll just pipe that in, dude. Fucking Enya? Oh, my God. All day or day. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure my bulge, whatever is worth... Touches his leg at some point, whether he's massaging or I'm massaging. Yes. Um, so that's going to happen uh, in just a few weeks when we find out who wins. The maybe a week and a half. If I have anything to say about it, this thing, whole thing will be wrapped up by about Monday. Oh. So I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But Brown down, uh, Kyrie Irving out for the uh, rest of the playoffs. Uh, Jalen Brown is hurt. He's coming back maybe tonight, if not, but he got hurt in the other game, yeah. so his, his ankle's going to be, he's going to play, but you know he's going to play hurt. And Joel Embiid's playing with the mask. <laughs> and Embiid's in, Ben Simmons in. And, let, and by the way, barring any injury, I think this is a walk-off for the Sixers, as, is, long as, they don't take, as long as they don't take it bullshit, because they're not a bullshit team, boss. And Jason Tatum is no shit. Wait, is, uh, is Joel Embiid's injury, uh, like, could he, if they made it to the what, Eastern Conference Finals or the, or the championship, could he stop wearing the mask? Maybe. I'm telling you, the mask isn't even... He's fine with the mask. Okay. He's banging. Me and uh, When me and Christine went to that game, before the game, he was running back and forth from three-point line to three-point line. And in the, the mask? And, and, in the mask, and someone's feeding him like a, a dribble or a yeah. bounce pass. And at one point, he did like, like eight or nine in a row, just bang one, run back over, bang one. I mean, he hits them at a crazy high percentage if there's no defense, so he's going to be fine. He's fine. That's awesome. Well, um, there it is. So that's the bet. It's that in the Bonfire bet. versus you know what, dude. As far as Jay versus Bobby Kelly, Celtics versus Sixers, the winner gets fifty dollars and a sensual massage on his show. It's gonna be sexy, um, sexy. Let's take right a break on the home WJNK. Uh, you're that listening. Junk. To, yeah, it's junk's the best one. We'll be right back to get the let out with Justin Silver. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan So. You're getting the let out right here on your home of rock. Yeah, you are. Sirius XM 95. WJNK, the j j junk of New York. It's KSHAT, the shot. <laughs> New York's only opiate rock station. We're giving you music to fall asleep on the highway to. WTRKMK, the track mark of the streets. <laughs> Clean nibble. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it's the bonfire. Actually, it's. Comedy Central Radio Series XM95. I'm Big Jokers, and that's Dan Soder. That's yeah. Cool. Journing us in studio. You know him, everybody. You love him. Hell yeah. The Beastmaster himself, feeding birds no. that live on his fucking fire escape, I guess. Yeah. Seemed un- unsettling. But uh, he, doesn't touched, worry, he, t- guy, he touched him again, which <laughs> makes him <everyone> uncomfortable. <laughs> a guy that doesn't uh, worry about diseases. <laughs> uh, this is, guy's not worried about any uh, aviary flus of any sort. Well, I guess uh, we know the kid that would pick up the dead squirrel when we were little. Uh, <laughs> I'm immune to them at that at this point. That's what has happened. My friends. <laughs> Gather. <laughs> I'm breeding them on my fire escape. Yeah. I bring you an <laughs> army. <laughs> I bring you news from the land. 
I have just traveled northeast. The squirrels there are plumper, happier. <laughs> they are plump and happy. Go. Be with your kind. I send messages like a Harry Potter movie via owl. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like, did you text me, Jay? No. That'd be I great. you an owl. We're, we're driving home and you're like, hey, hold on. Slow down a little bit. Gotta roll down the window. And a Falcor bird just flies lands. in. Bird just lands. I'm like, Dude, that's a live bird. Dude, that's a live bird in the rental car. Dude, that's a live bird in the rental car. <laughs> Chill. It's a text Daniel. message from the chick from the club this weekend. He's like, Daniel, I trust you got my message as my bird senses tell me it has arrived. Falcor has told me he's back. And without sheet. Yeah, we have, we have so much uh, recapping to do. You and Justin were, of course, together on the road this weekend in oh. uh, Chicopee and Providence. Fun. Uh, I was in Cleveland with Mike Fenoya. Buddies on the road. Buddies on the road. I'll Buddies tell you. on the road. Due time, due time. Buddies on the road. Due time, due time. Buddies on the road. 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 Friends. Friends. Buddies on the road. Friendship. Friendship, but is on the road. <laughs> uh. Hey everyone, we're Crosby, Stills, and Trash. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, just <this> my birds. <laughs> we're Crusty Pills and <laughs> we're Crusty Pills and Trash. Yeah, <laughs> can that be our dude, folk group, dude? I would love Crusty, Crusty Pills, Pills and, and Trash. One thousand percent. Can I grow a mustache? <laughs> can yeah. we? Are we uh, playing instruments in our folk group? No, no, but we're just three part harmony. Yeah. Can we air drum while we do that? Sure. Thank you. Um, Moving on. I want. We both have a lot to recap from this weekend here. Uh, Justin, I wanted you to come in. Christine even thought one would be such a great story for you to be a part of, as a, a part of this trio of uh, of us sit at this table with plenty of father issues. Oh yeah. Uh, you and Dan, of course. Uh, father's no longer around. Mine still hanging in there. Uh, making for weird situations. Well, that's that's what's weird about. That's what I love about our show. It's not that's what's weird is like my dad's in the dirt, so we can't fucking get any new Gary stories. Mine are all trapped from where you know when I was sleeping in Bar, uh, Dick Tracy full pajamas and he was uh, buck naked sleeping in a pullout couch. Yeah. <laughs> Can you sleep butt naked? Yeah, dude. My dad oh, always dude. slept naked. He didn't rock underwear. And by the way, he didn't rock underwear, <laughs> and he would flip his pecker into his uh, corduroy shorts with yeah. the zipper. Like you know what I mean? Like hold, like he would let it hook the V of the zipper as dork <laughs> and then flip it into his pants. Really? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. I can still smell the moves, sweat and cigarettes. Man. Oh, dude, my dad. Yeah, I my can dad. still smell his sweaty cigarette hands on Is he me. the kind of guy that like would pee but like not use his hands on his, just like hands uh, on his hips when he would pee? No, I, two hands. Yeah, he definitely. I think I've he, built the legends. Uh, yeah, the, Gary, uh, two hands. the legend of Gary Soder. One time he broke a girl's jaw with his dick. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He was. My mom didn't allow him to thrust after 1981 because she said it was too painful. <laughs> oh, shit, that's why you're an only child. Yeah. Yeah, my mom also survived Guillaume Barre, and they say her nerve damage is the only reason she could take such no. a deep dicking. She also survived Fartbox and Bray. Those are my two friends. Yeah. She survived them. Respect up. <laughs> she survived. Kick oh, ass. kick ass. Hey, everybody. You ever notice that white presidents dance like this and black presidents dance like this? Y'all some corny ass motherfuckers. Kick ass. <laughs> oh, did you go through the whole Michelle thing uh, the first hour? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course we did. Um, uh, I wanted to tell a story that I think we'll all enjoy the as frequent airport travelers as we yeah, all are. Yeah, dude. I going to be in an airport this week, bro. I was at the airport in Cleveland, leaving Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. And TSA pre-check line I go into. Breezy, easy. Doing the serpentine, but it's empty pretty much, but I'm doing the serpentine because there is a little bit of a line. Yeah. As I'm doing the serpentine, a lady with her fancy fucking suitcase and or whatever just did the duck while she's watching me serpentine. Yeah, does the duck under and just gets in front of me. She limboed right through, huh? Well, went under me and got in front of me in the line, which I thought was really weird. So what was your immediate reaction? You're like this bitch. This I'm bitch. Like, I'm gonna have to fuck. Am I gonna say? Were you like I'm gonna say something? No. Nope. Oh, I mean, I had the itch too, but I, I'm just course, gonna I, stare a hole through the back of her head. Stare a hole through the back of her head. Here's what happened though. We go to the TSA pre-check line. TSA pre-check does not clear you of all secondary screenings. It's just the much shorter line. You don't have to take your shoes off or empty your bag. Yeah. But if they anything, she had two bags with her. She had like a carry or two carry-ons, but one was like a duffel bag and yeah. one was like a suitcase. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, she was, you know, she's like an older, like yeah. in her fifties or something. Okay. But she bitchy. You can see real bitch face, resting like cunt face, resting cunt face. I don't know why we didn't take it to cunt. What? Goes through no, uh, I ramp, no, ramp it up. I'm, I'm supportive. Ramp it up. Jay, when he's upset, I'm upset, Dan. Um, so this vagina oh. blood fart. So she's, she's waiting in, front, in love. She's in front of me. <laughs> she goes. She's 
this dumbass <laughs> still like doesn't realize the TSA pre check you don't have to take your shoes off. So in the time it takes her to take her <laughs> yeah. shoes off, I get in front of her now to you know, cause you could know, Jack move. <laughs> Jack move. I go through security, the thing. It's fine. Fart. My stuff comes down the other side. I watch both of her bags get pulled yeah. for the extra and you can see and she's being real like, Can I have my bags please? And they go, Miss, it's here for extra we have to go through extra security checks. She goes, it's ridiculous. It's like fucking ridiculous. I Is mean, it really? Like, it was, she was that person. It was uh, that, so wonderful to watch that happen to her. Yeah, that's the thing where they're just waiting to be plucked out. They're they're not um, they're not there to enjoy anything. They're there to criticize everything. That's what those women are there for. Where they're like, this guy doesn't even know. Slash and burn, get to the front. Fucking lose I mean, there. it was instant justice. You don't get that a lot in your life. Airport justice. You rarely this get to is see another tale of or- airport justice. Although on World Star, any of those video uh, sites like that, you know you're seeing a good video when it when it starts off with you see that like instant ju- instant karma instant justice. It's always great when it's like man, you see a guy run out of a check cashing place like with his gun and then just like, a, a bus just hits him. Like it happens yeah. and it's on tape a lot. So when you watch that, you you just saw the whole thing happen. I mean, I think your victory was when you got in front of her. That was the ultimate victory. No, Did no, she make no, eye no, contact no, no. with her while her shit was nope. being ripped? Oh, no, really? No, seriously. I wasn't, even, uh. I wasn't even drilling daggers. I just thought it was like, for a woman here, I bet... I just know this chick. Also, I was coming off of seeing my stepmother. So I know this kind of chick. Mm-hmm. The chick who's like... Gary brought Diane. I always, yeah. Oh, she sucks. Um, uh, but the kind of chick that like you... Um, you know, exactly. She's gonna be. Every, she's gonna call everything else low class while yeah. she's doing low class shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know people like that. Dude, I know people. Who's, I know like a lot of. People, I know a lot of people whose insults to people are like, "You're just fucking like white trash or you're garbage." You know that? And it's like these are people who I know. Like you change fucking tags on clothes Dude, to get them cheaper. This you is fucking exact, idiot. What's wrong with you? This is exactly what I'm talking about. When I drive back from my grandma's house in Lake County and I go to the 101, there's this. There's a town called Ukiah, and south of there's this like this like. Really shitty gas stations. The only thing open, I take usually super early flights out of San Francisco so I can get back to New York at a decent time. So I have to leave my grandma's house at like five, sometimes 4.30 in the morning, sure. and I want a cup of coffee. This is the only gas station open for fucking miles, and, I, and it has coffee. I'm in there getting a coffee at five o'clock in the morning. There's a woman in snow boots with uh, sweats tucked into the snow boots. She has a giant fucking Carhartt work jacket on. Ready to fuck. Cigarette in her hand. Coming to get a coffee at five in the morning, and I'm pouring it, and she goes, "It's ghetto as shit, ain't it?" <laughs> and I went, "What?" And she goes, "Shit's ghetto, huh?" And I was like, "You're like, you're trash. What are you talking about? Do you know what you look like? You look like a meth head. I thought you were a meth head, but I knew that. I know. Well, I mean, we're in Lake County. It's possible. She was working there. No." She was going to get a cup of coffee and looked at me also. like, she, yeah, but she was like shitting on the coffee display like, shit's ghetto, huh? And you're like, I don't know, it's coffee. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, it's a cup of coffee. And she's like, gross, huh? <laughs> I'm like, you're gross. Yeah. How that o- you? that almost reminds me of the banana chick. What's that? It's like dyke, wearing dyke boots. And yeah. Fucking... She wore like, oh, the lady. The banana chick. It always reminds me of that. Oh, she's Justin like, this place saw is a, that. This place is a dump. And I'm like, you're a fucking dump. Yeah, that Jersey lady. I don't think I ever fully told you that story. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know you have. When you guys went down there. When we were at Go Bananas and that girl yeah. after the show was like, I'm a Bonfire fan. I know I'm a mom and I can't I can't believe you think I'm a Bonfire. She's so drunk, her fake yes. eyelashes hanging off her face. And then she was angry at you for not being like, she goes, Do you why guys don't you think- suck my dick out of for liking you? Yeah. And she kept cutting people off that had. Uh, bonfire shirts and being like, I'm a real fan. She Hold was, on. She was trash. She Just, was like Long Island, Jew, like Long Island Jersey trash. But Justin watched the whole thing. Justin watched me go from being nice to, he watched me go zero to six. Oh, I watched you flip out. <laughs> yeah. Where I just go, shut did up. The, did he get the battle rap hand going? Maybe. He knows it's going down. You know, he, get, he got Is he about to serve a motherfucker? I go, oh, oh, oh why your eyelash running from your face? Oh, 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 oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just the best part was uh, when I told that lady she was being an asshole she was with a gay guy behind her who did the stereotypical gay guy two hands on his oh, mouth oh yeah and he went oh. <gasps> and I was like you suck oh Watutsi yeah oh, oh no oopsie Watutsi All right. oopsie Watutsi so you were in Cleveland yeah, and that's, that that lady, that was a wonderful justice moment right there. Oh man, but I, you're really, t- really I think you said it though. The psychology behind it is the reason you're all gassed up for this was because you ran into your stepmom or you saw your stepmom. Yeah, well, I, I mean, she was fine, my stepmom. Although I, I did hear the one thing: my dad always buys tickets for the show, like yeah. how his big group is. Mm. He buys them. No, oh. and what? That's I, it just because. Does he refuse to let you buy them? 
No, he doesn't even ask. Oh, okay. I'd get him for him. Yeah, okay. How was... big of a group does he bring? Um, he, Up to like 15, 20 people sometimes. Okay. At this moment, I guess he had like 10 with him. Are they well behaved or is it more like what happened with us when they're fine. with my family? No, they're fine. Okay. Yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty good. But like, uh, yeah, no, no one fucks up at all. Actually, they're great. My brothers and shit, and their girlfriends, it's all good. Hey, but yeah, yeah, he um, brings he, he brings them, <laughs> he brings the family, but he he pays. Yeah, you know, for the tickets. But I would get him his tickets. But uh, he does a weird thing where he tells me, though, like the two two things he did that was very weird, like giving me critiques through other people. Yeah, and they were very odd. It was That's very out of nowhere. Wait, so he was passive aggressive? I don't know. Tell me. This is very odd. Oh, and I'm going to tell you exactly how he said it. Okay. I want to make sure I do it justice because I don't think it was meant to be. I think it was dumber than it was malicious. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah, you know, and so and so. And, and one of your brother's girlfriend's moms are coming. Because they uh, like she's like, and they're they're Syrian, and like she's like a bit of a holy roller even, and you know the dad's not into it at all. He's not really into comedy or anything like that. But the mom likes you, so she's coming again. The mom, and I go cool. I go, she, I'm surprised like a uh, a Syrian holy roller is into my stuff at all. Yeah. She goes, no, I mean she said like when we were done, like she enjoyed it, but she said you stayed on a couple of things, you like stayed on a little bit too long, but you know, it was, but but that's, you know that's yeah. it. And it was just like a weird like I didn't ask for what the, her fucking problem was with it. Why yeah. would you tell that to me before yeah. the thing? I'm like, well, I, I don't. You want me? It's like, do you want me to keep in you mind go that? On, Jay? It was, no, it was like two hours, three hours before I went on, but oh, it didn't okay. matter. Yeah, but that's still like... She's a weird, it was a weird thing to say. And the other one was like, uh, yeah, Diane's like, uh, why didn't Jay get us our tickets? But, you know, it was like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to bother with it. And so, again, maybe it was like that little thing of like, hey, maybe next time you, you offer to get the tickets. But if you don't ask me, I'll never get them. Yeah. But if you ask me, I'll get them. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, of course I would. That's passive aggressive. That's passive aggressive. Of course. What? That's passive aggressive. Your dad's being passive aggressive. No, no, no. Oh, my dad is. Yeah. Yes. I said yeah, he yeah. was setting Jay up to say to him, "Oh, you don't have to buy tickets next time. I'll, I'll get you." But no, Jay's not going to do that. Good for you. Because you know why? Because he doesn't. Deserve, <laughs> you, you, yeah. Make him fucking ask for the tickets. Well, well. So I want to tell you. Uh, I don't want to hear that, Dad. <laughs> ask for tickets. Mom and Joe get comped. Oh, uh, yeah. Mom and, yeah. Trish doesn't. Uh, Trish hasn't paid for a drink at a comedy club in 10 years. In, uh, in recap, well, first of all, at Cleveland, I want to say, I mean, an insane amount of campers yeah, it's coming up. And I mean, they run campers it. who are, I mean, there were some diehards there, man, that really like some great stories. I love hearing what people like, uh, you know, what they say they've gotten through or they get through daily with a job they hate or a job they like that they can do. listen to us. <clears throat> all these different compliments coming from these different people and pictures and everyone was like really honest to God like super super sweet yeah not a, a fan at all while I was outside talking to a few fans and friends uh, a guy comes out barreling out of the you know there's the House of Blues yeah. bar yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, right, you're right down in that alley but the bar yeah for House of Blues and he comes out with his girlfriend who just has stink face on and she's young like how young 21 22 i found okay. that out he's probably 27 <laughs> okay so it's nothing crazy or anything but, he, but anyway he comes out and he's like ask me for a lighter uh i give him a lighter he lights this thing he goes yeah man they kicked me out <sighs> fucking bar i don't know what the hell that bullshit's about right and he's doing everything's too talking too close i you know? fucking hate it and I it's the fucking... hot it's the hot breath that really upsets me more than anything dude this gets so great i don't know how ridiculous this guy is he's like yeah He's like, yeah, it's too bad. You know what they kicked me out for? Doing karaoke. What? I go, that doesn't seem right. I go, it's karaoke night? He's like, yeah. He's like, but they don't like, because I, I do a little bit different. I mean, he's like, you know, and, and him and his chick are both wearing like Indians shirts, like, you know, Cleveland yeah. Indian shit. Because there was a game that night they probably went to. And he's like, uh, yeah, they kicked me out. Well, I do a little bit different. You know, I do a, I do like deaf. This is so funny, though. He goes, I do, a, you know, I do a karaoke for the deaf. You know what I mean? So, Which, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I think we've done that. <laughs> and what he's telling me, and what he's telling me, I very much, this is so funny because I go, I go, oh, I guess I can see why they kick you out for that. He's like, yeah, really? You do? He's like, why? You know what that is? I go, yeah, dude, I assume you're saying you went up there and you were like, uh, <laughs> You know, and does it an ironic? Don't you think it's like me? Like, he was doing song, that. Was I swear that to you, song, he, goes, he that was the song you thought of. I didn't even say it. To, I, I just went, I was like, you went up there and went like, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. I love that. That's just a song. Yeah. Well, we just had it on earlier. Um, <laughs> and what did he say? He goes, no. 
I mean, like I do like sign language. That's so dark. Dude, dude, I was just going to say as a joke, what if he's like, no, I use American sign language when I'm up there. Dude, that's so great when you out maniac a maniac. <laughs> no, he's a maniac. He like this, he's like, he's like, I just got kicked out of this bar for doing something crazy. And you're like, did you do a retard voice when you're doing some songs? And he goes, who would do that? I <laughs> swear to you, it was so funny. He was like, he was like no, it's like sign language. I go, I go, oh, I go, they kick you after I go, I go, I can see why they kick you. I go, that seems a little crazy. If you wouldn't stop and you're doing karaoke and not talking yeah we're singing it all i go that's kind of that's kind of bizarre does this karaoke for the day? i was like it's kind of bizarre goes, my sister's deaf and that's exactly how she Christine, talks take it off the screen and she thinks she loves that song yeah <laughs> um yeah what you recall, so he said when i do karaoke for the deaf so he says it's, it's sign language i mean i guess i can see why they would kick you out for that yeah, yeah well, let, well, well let me finish though and i go he's like well yeah i mean wasn't that I, I go i did a song i just wanted to go up to another song so i went up there where other people were singing and i started like you know trying to like you know go up there and get on the mic and then they just end up kicking me out or whatever and i, was, I thought it was an idiotic thing to do so i'm not supporting that at all yeah but i go uh just trying to keep the subject like keep him engaged because the fans that are around are enjoying this yeah. moron and his chick just sitting there with like a I'm cold, why are we still standing here face? I mean, the Indians game was hours ago. I swear to God, so she goes, but it's funny, I go, so is that what you do? Like you're a sign language interpreter? He's like, was. Something like that, you know, some line of he was being a little shit. Gave my and boss chick, a wet willy. I go, that's cool. I go, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's the be, number one no-no in sign language. I go, that's got to be a pretty cool job. I go, my sister was actually thinking about going, almost went to school to do that also. And his girlfriend just goes, it's this drunk girl. Yeah. And you ever see someone, I call her out on this too. This chick was looking to have a problem. Yeah. It was very weird because I go, my sister used to do that pleasantly. She goes, well, I'm not his fucking sister. I what? go, I go, okay. <laughs> I go, I go, I don't know how, I go, how much school does that take, dude? Because my sister was thinking about doing it. And she goes, because I'm, because I don't know what this guy's problem is because I'm not his fucking sister. I go, miss, I think you're fighting with no one here. I go, <laughs> I'm saying, and then another guy, a, a very nice guy next to me goes, no, sweetie, he's saying that his, like, he's actually doing, like, yeah. trying to be pleasant. Yeah, and he yeah, also yeah. saying, it's like, no, no, but laughing also. He's like, no, he's saying that his sister <laughs> tried to the do the interpretation thing. She's like, yeah, I'm not your sister. And, and it, it was one of those, it frustrated me because, like, she just gave up, but never, didn't give up, like, oh, I misunderstood, gave up on, like, I'm just, because, well, I don't, it's fine, but I'm, I'm I'm not. Agree, so that kind of thing. She goes, like, agree. Ooh, agree to fuck. disagree. <laughs> yeah. Agree to disagree. I know I'm not. Sister, you know, if a drunk person brother. says that to a point that you're, that's not being made, you want to knee him in the fucking face. So then uh, it continues. Like, like two or three more things I say where she was like, uh, I go, oh, at one point he goes, he goes, yeah, it's cool. He goes, I got to get her out of here. I got to get her back home to her parents. Right. Jesus. So he goes, uh, and she was like, yeah, whatever. And then like, a, so less than a minute later, I go, well, dude, it was nice meeting you. So I know you guys got guys, so you got to get her back to her folks, you said, you know. And then she goes, I'm a fucking adult. <laughs> like, I don't fucking have to tell my parents what I do. I go, I know. He just said that like a yeah. second ago. And I was just like, dude, being been... understanding, you have to go. And she goes, I don't fucking. And she goes, you don't want to even see me get like hood right now. I oh. go, hood, like, I go, what do you mean? She goes, you don't even want to see me get hood. And I'm like, she goes, don't, I mean, don't get fooled. I'm from Memphis originally. So you want to see me get Memphis hood? We can. I go, miss, now there's nothing I want to see more than you get Memphis hood. Not on me, though. Yeah. Like somebody go else. Do it on that, can you do it on that <laughs> telephone pole? I go, but give me a heads up because I do want to film it in some way. And she's like, can we just get out of here? And then, so what they do is they stack all the tables and chairs against the front, like, window door you know window wall window? Of, of the comedy club yeah, yeah, yeah you know they have them all they're kind of tied up yeah so it's almost like a it's just stacks of like tables and chairs so it's kind of like bouncy almost a little bit if you bounce into it um but hard but you know yeah and she just goes let's get the fuck out of here and then she felt she ping-ponged her way down that entire thing she's never stopped Dad. almost falling she was just gonna fucking go i don't understand what's problem. and the guy was even kind of like had a sort of like a i don't know what's problem with you and she's like and he's going and the guy's going like up oh, yep yep well, uh -huh. there she goes. Yep. Yep. She's yep. Falling. Now she's falling yep. the right. Now she's falling the right way. And they just eventually wandered off into the fucking darkness. But what a shithead. But those that's absolutely alcohol to the point where you probably saw those people the next day and they'd be like, I don't remember but they, it just magnifies the shittiness in them. Oh yeah. You see that shittiness because that they're fucking all hammered. Um one hundred percent. And and the the final uh thing of my weekend that 
holds any value that was fucking hilarious. And Fenoy, he apologized for it so much, but it was so funny uh, in hindsight. But he really set up a nice scenario. This is what we had wanted to have Justin in for like this like father talk. Fenoy was talking. My dad was getting ready to leave the first night he came to hang out. So he came solo the first night. Yeah. Okay. And he's hanging out, and uh, Mike goes, "Yeah, you know, it was, it was a cool seeing you, man." He goes, "You know, my me and my dad just had like a long talk. You know, and he's saying like, just, you know, him and his dad kind of working things out in their life." And he's like, mm-hmm. "And I just felt like a tremendous weight lifted off my shoulders," and uh, and it's been really great, you know. And I was like, "All right." All right, Mike, I'm going to go walk my dad to his car. And yeah. then, of course, I mean, I'm waiting. I almost started a fight. There was a hipster kid walking. I mean, yeah. real, like, curly mustache. Not even a kid. He was like probably like 40 yeah. or so. But curly Q mustache, walking through the puddles, like, kicking them up. Yeah. Not hitting me, but hitting other pedestrians enough that I was, I almost, not to have a conversation with my dad right now, <laughs> almost thought about fighting this guy. You go, fuck you, man. <laughs> hey, puddles. Over here, fuck face. Your dad's like, it, Jay, hold on. Jay, get back. I kind of want to talk to you about something, buddy. <laughs> now, fuck you, Gary. Hold on real quick. I gotta fuck this mustache you fuck up. I mean, it was really... Like, I like my son cares about justice. This guy was a jerk-off kicking the puddles for sure, but it was nothing that I needed to be involved in at all. If the people he was wedding didn't have a problem, then it shouldn't be my problem. Yeah. Oh, did he throw his arm around you? No, not at all. It was just a simple... It was a weird one. It was. He just goes... Yeah, he goes, you see stuff like that. That's why, you know, I always made sure that me and you had a really good relationship. Ooh. And I went, oh, man. I go, I go, ah, no, nah, dude, let's not. Come on. I go, listen, I get it. You were young, dude, when you had me. I'm fine. It's fine. Don't sweat it. But like, because earlier tonight, too, he goes, you know what I'm proud of? He goes, I have three completely like well adjusted like he goes, he goes well I swear to God he goes well adjusted he goes good uh, he goes good people blah 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 boys and I go no dad I just, I just, you just don't know me that. I'm off I'm all kinds of fucked up he goes what do you mean I go I go no 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 dude I'm like all kinds of fucked up and he goes yeah and then and then after that is when that walk where he goes I'm glad we always maintain a good relationship I go ah, there was like a dicey decade or few in there dad I just, yeah, but I, I, we don't have to do this man we don't have to, I, I just get out I gotta go up there anyway when he missed your birthday Day when you were a kid or when you didn't talk for 10 years? What was the awesome father-son relationship? I think I, I, think I did real math and it was like seven years, genuinely. Dude, That's a long time. I mean, dude, seven years not to talk to your fucking kid and then you're going to have the balls to fucking walk so to a parking lot and go like, yeah. That's why we always had a great relationship. You'd almost be like, who the fuck are you? It's crazy. Who the fuck are you? That's like being on the Owen 16 Lions and being like, yeah, the best team in the NFL there. He almost oh. takes because he was like a good father to his other two sons, so it's oh. almost like he takes takes that. Oh, that gets and, me. Oh, yeah, that's why I wanted to <laughs> That's why she wanted you in here, oh, for this me. reason. Oh, yeah, he was a great oh. father to his other two sons, so he almost, like, groups Jay in <sighs> to them. If you see, if you see, wait, Christine, if you see this picture, you can see he's a fantastic father to Mike Fenoya. He loves oh, me. Yeah. Mike Fenoya so wishes is, he was your brother's friend so, so he could like Gary. <laughs> dude, so this is... The, oh, he loves my dad. Yeah. I loves him. And a, this is great. Oh, your dad's very nice. Why do they look like dad, My dad's a super charming guy, but wait, this is great, so... Uh, Christine saw a picture that my brother posted. Yeah. That is them, my two brothers, I mean, as adults with beards and their whole thing, wearing, they're both wearing onesie footy pajamas, and my dad's wearing dad pajamas. Yeah. And it's real. It's, you can see it's definitely Christmas morning. Oh, like God. Damn it. My dad. Dude. This is fucked up. This is like, this is like cuckold dad porn. Dude, in every, that. let me tell you something. In every, like, family picture, you know the family, yeah, the pictures oh. on the mantle, it's my dad and my brothers, and then, like, my headshot in its own private oh. picture next to it. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, dude. Uh, Let me tell you something that, uh, as being a, as being a son of a Gary, headshot, my headshot was at my mom's house. For God, dude, that was weird. <laughs> being a son of a Gary, the best part, and Justin's a son of a Gary. I'm a son of an Alan who is a Gary. Who is a Gary? He's oh yeah. A Alan's you would, you, a Gary. Alan's Alan's a Gary. Say, no, not to the kids he likes. No. <laughs> no, no, no. What, what's the son? What's the son of like a good dad? What do we call? Him? We don't. Have, we don't have the Chad. Those, those, don't, those don't walk in our no circles. Idea. A Stewart. A Stuart. Stuart. Um, what I was going to do is it before you want to say that before we read this caption. Because that's great. I'll read the caption. <laughs> you sure? So it's it's them uh, 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 kissing my dad on the, each cheek. Oh, double kissing! It's great. This, 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 by the way, this, 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 this doesn't make me sad. This is hilarious to me because after all that, it says uh, from my brother. He wrote, "Shout out to this dude." 
We joke a lot, but I couldn't have asked for a better role model than Big G. Love you, Pops. So great. Meanwhile, this weekend I was talking to my dad. I was like, remember when I used to uh, see you smoking weed all the time when I was like eight? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, he's, like, when I, he's like, when you were three, I ran off to the Super Bowl in a Winnebago with my boys. Dude, <laughs> I mean, that's like, at least my Gary just didn't reproduce outside of me and just went into the dirt where you're kind of like, Dude, well, it's the worst. It fucking be, it ends with me i'm the last one that took the brunt of his shittiness but i mean it's not the worst me though i'm very i hold on, i but think I'm, it's great that that, that he was but good, what i'm that, saying that is been. what i'm saying is i there's no you two are saints for being able to walk around not murdering people after your dad left you and went and started a better family dude we used to have <laughs> my started bro- a better family it's just, you're like fuck you it's dude the- it's my dad. We used to. My brothers had these awesome rooms with their names, like you know, written in like crayon, like those crayon <laughs> things, like Alex and Noah. I was upstairs Alex next to the Noah. next to the maid Ifka, Ifka. In, like, with like the old furniture that they had from like two houses before. You slept next to the maid, <laughs> dude. She would make you watch her uh, get changed. Mister, Mister uh, Justin, Mister Justin, exactly. Do you not like what you see? Mister, when he wants you to watch me go to the bathroom, he says you are not a real son. <laughs> <laughs> you are half. Uh, she calls him half uh, half son Justin. Half you say, son you Justin. Say the thi- it I, was so I, I, like I know that. you. I know. I don't think you picked the word necessarily on purpose, even. But you said uh, not I better club though. But yeah, like better family because it's not. Be- it's it, not better. It, just- it, it wasn't a better family. I was very happy with the, the, oh, the template of the joke. But but it was more. What's weird about it is my dad's side though. Definitely went more like he has the family where it's like everyone put on your matching scarves because we're going to church on Christmas morning and Easter yeah. Sunday and like you know it's like it's that kind of you know we're all going to go tailgating as a family to the football game like yeah. that is much more, my family wasn't that shit but my family was it, it made whatever you know who, who I am and I you know prefer those people no like, and listen man I mean I'm uh, saying like growing up with my mom that's a hilariously but it's a it's a hilarious like it's it's a, a snow globe version of the of a family that's you're what like, I'm saying you're like man I was definitely left out of that yeah. that's what I'm saying is both of you guys have been left out of yeah. the wa- out of the wallet families yeah, like yeah, those yeah. are like the wallet families where his dad's like, and there, look at those two boys there. And that's my third son. He talks about black cock a lot. Really, <laughs> and then it's comes like, up often. And then like your dad's like, this is my son Justin. He's funny <laughs> and can speak to animals. <laughs> this is my first son has the gift of talking to beasts. <laughs> the man, the, the man throws up a, a finger and a sparrow lands on it. Um, my kid would go like this. His middle name, uh, I'll, I'll think of it. He goes, I don't know, bonks, bonks oh, somewhere oh. in the flat <laughs> part of the mountain state. When my he. Blew Blew out my ex's bus. I never called him back. When my dad used to call me, he'd be like, "When we're all in the room, he'd be like, a- Alex, uh, no, j- just it was always last. Oh, yeah. like, he would forget the name, and then my name would come oh, last. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it, was, it doesn't bum me out. I, so I, this I, is Justin. That's Justin's. Uh, yeah, Justin's brothers uh, are to the left. Yeah, no, they just like they drive Ferraris and bang models. No, they don't. These two. That one. That's Noah. Right and then here. Alex is right next to Jay on the other side. Right here. That's Alex. Your brothers were perfect. They were like everything I wanted them they to be. They were everything you think they're going to be. Bro, right? hit, yo, bro, we're hitting the strip club. Oh, 100%. Yo, bro, you you haven't go? done coke till it's mixed with pussy glitter. Yeah. <laughs> Not for nothing, it'll make you spike and it sticks on the side of your nostril. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bizarre. It's like your mom did the same. Your mom and dad both moved on to like have different families but it, you were just so included in one and so excluded from the other it's a very bizarre thing. oh look it's a thing of, of not i didn't live with my dad so that that is what it is but I, so i'm not even like uh wound up about that i don't live with isabella you know what i mean i love t-bone but, and joe but uh it's a t-bone and joe yeah uh. <laughs> but they uh but no but i was but i live with my mom so i was definitely but it was very happily my stepfather was very Wanted very much for me to be included in that. That's family. which yeah. is great. That's a big deal. That's Michael, a huge deal. With you, were you not included in your dad's family? Uh, I was not. I was like they're in Florida, so I'd go see them like two, three times a year, and then every there was always something different. There was like, oh look, the, we got a dog named now Justin. We, exactly. Now we got we this. named him now Justin, like, so because you can talk to him. <laughs> it was like here's a. I never. I everything was always like whatever backpack I brought that was my shit. I had nothing there. Does that's, that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So it was like a Did bummer. You, it was like I was always sleeping over. That's there. a that's a great question. You know I, mean? I never even thought of that. Did you have anything at your dad's not house? Not 
a thing. Not a thing. Did you have like your own furniture? Was it like, oh, we'll make the guest, we'll make a bed for you somewhere? No, yeah, it was. It was. uh, It was couch or or stay in someone's bed. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, there was bunk beds. At one point, I was in a bunk bed. My grandma, but but the bunk bed wasn't for me. It was like for the twin boys, and then one would sleep somewhere else. Like they were older, so they'd go sleep by the TV. Oh, you you weren't in a bunk bed with Ifka the maid. No, 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 oh, no. Okay. Ifka. Well, you guys actually slept in the same no, room. But my, but my, no. but actually, what I'm talking about though, no, I never had any bed at my dad. Actually, at one time at my dad's house in Ohio, they would do things. I'd go there for the summer. I'd bring a friend because it had nothing to do with seeing my dad at that point. It was totally like yeah, getting out like, of Philly. I got to go to work. Yeah, my dad just lived his life and still didn't really do shit. Me and my friend would just yeah. do whatever. Totally get that. And in the basement, he, they put us like a, a fucking dude, two teenage boys in a water bed in a fucking in a uh, concrete basement. It was pretty just, fucking hilarious. They were asking for you guys to bang. Yeah, and you know, so what are you gonna do when I when I answered the call? Yeah. What was I supposed to do? I, I was, was a boy. I was, I was a boy. And then it said boy. <laughs> getting boofed on I a, was a boy. Getting boofed on a waterbed. <laughs> um let's take our last break and we'll come back. Uh we're hanging out with Justin Silver. Justin's plugs are Neurotica Podcast. Neurotica Podcast. Oh, I thought you had yeah. some dates that you wanted to plug too. Oh yeah, I'll be at um I'll be at Levity Live in Nyack on the 9th of this month, and then the 17th to the 19th, I'll be at Uncle Vinny's down in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. That's yeah. a great club. Yeah, yeah. I, very, very good yeah. club. Yeah. Um, we'll be right. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM95. I'm Dan Soder, that's Big Jay Okerson. And joining us, the Beastmaster, Justin Silver, who's with me all weekend in New England, New England. Providence. Great well, shows. Scratch your ball bag. I got taint, dude. Cool. And then do me a favor, let's fucking hold hands and high five like we do after the show all the time. <laughs> Don't show me behind the curtain so much, Dan. I just tweeted my fucking... You took a work <laughs> shit, you just scratched your fucking ball bag and taint, and then after this you're going to touch my face. We always face touch at the end of the show. <laughs> we don't ever face touch. We always face touch. I'm down to face touch. I'm not down to face yeah, touch now. I don't care if you wipe it on the back of your knee jeans. Yeah. These are slates. They are good jeans. Um, yeah, Justin came with me to the Rhode Island Comedy Connection. It was a lot of fun. Is it called the Rhode Island Comedy Connection? Now? It's called Providence Comedy Connection. It's called the Comedy Connection. Comedy Connection. Providence. Rhode In Providence. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like calling it Rhode Island. Uh, I we, that was the thing. we split a hotel room. That's uh, always fun. Yeah. We bought some Nerf guns. Uh, watched of- the Greatest Royal Rumble. Can you bring up Titus O'Neil falls running into the Greatest Royal Rumble? Because it's one of the funniest things it, I saw. It was live Saturday. It was yeah, because it was in Saudi Arabia, and so it aired at noon on Friday. Uh, and it was the time. Royal Rumble. It was. It's called the Greatest Royal Rumble. Uh, the world's greatest Royal Rumble, where the Saudi, the the Saudi Sports Committee. Agreed to pay the WWE. I think what I read online was something like 110 million dollars to come. Is that uh, Russell Vince? Oh, dude, this is so great. So it's in this stadium in Saudi Arabia. They had 50 stars, and Titus O'Neil, who's a star, came running down. And uh, here you can play the clip. What, what's the biggest name that was there? Uh, Undertaker was there. They're all there. A lot of big people. John were there. Cena was there. John Cena, Triple yeah. H opened it. Oh, oh, and he's shit. under the ring. And then he crawls back out. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna. You saw that live? Oh, dude, you saw that happen live. So what happened live was they didn't show that. <laughs> what they showed was <laughs> we'll tweet it out at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter. What they showed live was they announced oh. Titus. They announced Titus O'Neil, and then he doesn't go, and then uh, Corey Graves, just the announcer, just starts laughing. Look at him. <laughs> Valhalla, I am coming. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so what they showed live was him crawling back out, and I thought he was under the ring, so I didn't get what it was. And when I saw it was a replay, I was like, that is so great. Because you know his, he was cursing his ass off when he was crawling back out. I'm going, motherfucker, I fall for fucking fuck. I like that if he were just like under the ring for the whole ma- for the whole event, and then he just pops out at the end like that. They've done that. It's time for Titus Power, me. everybody. <laughs> Titus O'Neil. Titus oh! Power! Oh! <laughs> and I'm under the ring. By the way, there's like a ton of shit under that ring, so he definitely bumped into it. By the way. Like do, do it again. Do it again. Uh, Start from the beginning. Uh, 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 from the beginning of the run. 
<laughs> You're definitely not supposed to see Win, win, it. win, win, shit. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to get out of there. <laughs> no one's going to eliminate me. Oh, yeah. Go back. It's like, it's like boxes of merchandise under there. Goes, All right. I'm going to hit the white boy first. Yeah. Then I'm going to come out. I'm going to get that Chinese looking ass motherfucker. Oh, then the other white boy, he wears a t-shirt. Next. Motherfucker wears a t-shirt and this thing. And you about to see raw, real power coming up your way right as we speak. Oh, shit. Yeah, shit. Hold on. Oh, Should shit. we do the run? <laughs> Titus O'Neil coming to the ring. Yeah! He goes, he gets oh, the side no of ring goes, stop me. Who won? Can't be stopped. I'm on all the way. <laughs> <laughs> they like behead you in Saudi Arabia for that. What? Yeah. That's wrong. I know. They'll kill you in Colombia for <laughs> scoring on your own goal. Yes. That is very true. So Justin and I... Uh, we had some good inside friend moments. Well... The one that made us laugh, and the reason that Justin's on the show, because Justin was like, we got to call Jay and just tell him about this. Can I tell the story, please? Sure, Justin. With you. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> Go for it. Tell, I, the, tell the story. I think we were both we were both uh, very attractive waitress. You were at, both a very attractive waitress <laughs> at, one, at no, one point Good job time. telling the story. <laughs> very, uh, <laughs> we story. are both. We are both very yeah. attractive yeah. waitress. We're hot waitress. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a pretty inside friendship. And, uh, we did some cosplay on <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> we were roller skate waitresses. I did a real... Uh, <laughs> we, were, we both got part-time I'll jobs like, at Sonic for the day. Yeah, Soder's not a roller blade guy. <laughs> I am. He's more of a shake maker. Was, so, I mean, that's probably the main reason I made more tips. I, also, I can back skate. And I, and I can give sassy ad libs as I do. <laughs> <laughs> what happened is we went, we did the show in Chicopee, Massachusetts last night at the Loft. Great show. Um, Marty Caproni, who runs it, is, it was just a real good time. But uh, first, when we pull up, there's a brand new BMW, like in the where, like in the back parking. Sick. And. Uh, Hold on. Yeah, you can hear your mouth. These microphones are powerful. Sorry. You're just like, Do you want me to leave? No, I love you. Let's not fight about it. No, I want to tell little parts. But it sounded like you were eating cashew halves. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like you were eating in the mic. That's why I was like, I don't think the, the trucker's like, who's sucking a... T-? Yeah, but- I brought my Snyder's mustard pretzels when I come to do <laughs> yeah, radio. What are you talking about? Oh, man. I would blow two guys right now for a handful of Snyder's of Hanover Ooh. honey mustard and oh. onion pretzel pieces. That's- that was the load. Mustard and onion? Huh? What'd you say? Do you say honey mustard and onion? <laughs> that's, that's yeah. Reaction. Why? What's that's up with that? You, you got a problem before with you get violent with your girlfriend? Yeah. You go, what's that? What'd, what'd you say? Yeah. Why? Did you what'd throw you? them out? I'll fucking drop you. <laughs> yeah. you on a flight of steps. I like to eat a like nice crisp pickle when I come on the radio. You got to <laughs> <laughs> a crunch crisp me mm, um, So we pull. I mean, Jay's still in this. Yes. Okay. No, you were staring at Christina like you were going to fight her. So we pulled up and there's this BMW and Marty's like, oh, dude, it's the bartender. She's fucking crazy hot. And I didn't know which one he was talking about, but we went into the regular bar and the bartender downstairs was like Con Air. She's one of your major crushes. Uh, Who's the girl that plays the wife in Con Air? Oh, shit. The girl from Patch Adams? Yeah. Bring her up. Yeah, she was a like a. South, she didn't look like her, but she was that naturally beautiful. She was South a South Mass eight point five. She was a nine. She was a South Mass nine. A dude. South Mass nine. Yeah, she South? looks like a young B D Wong. Mm, like kind her. of. She didn't. Yes. Yeah, so it was like that kind of natural beauty where you just see her and you're like, oh my god, you're the hottest girl I've ever seen in my life. In and, this bar. In this bar. Well. <laughs> I fall quick and I fall hard. Uh, so Dan, we wrote three songs about her. Yeah, well, dude, that's yeah, gets my favorite part where Marty and I are talking. Doris, about. Doris, turn off the tap, turn on your heart. <laughs> so, we're, so Justin and I, let uh, me be your ball rag, baby, <laughs> cleaning up your spills of life. Oh, dude, when you're doing the, uh, so Dan we, made a little Bruce song for. Her. Well, that's the whole point. I was getting. so we do the show, and then after the show, Justin. Meets a vi- we're taking pictures outside with everyone. Justin meets a very attractive woman who's yeah. all over Justin, and and makes it pretty clear. I think from the top that she's single, right? Uh, she was with that dude, and I said I was being very nice. I was like, "Oh, you your boyfriend?" She's like, "He's not my boyfriend." I was like, "Okay," and then he left, and then she's like, "Oh, he got very." She, apparently, he took her out on a date to you know to that show, and then you hit on her. I didn't hit on her. She You're- gave me. I did not. I did not initiate it. But you were exchanging numbers with her when he after left. I cleared the fact that it wasn't. I, did, I was like, "Oh, your boyfriend." She's like, "No, no, no, he's not my boyfriend." And he was, was like, but he was still there when you. Exchanged he was still numbers. there, and he just and gave me he, that. And he then gave he me that look. Off. Yeah, he yeah. gave me that look. Like, no, I kind of. I thought you said that you got weird. Like he was on a date. No, no, no. She he walked away, and then she was. Uh, he was sort of texting with her weird. Like, hey, 
That's yeah. not cool. But not yeah. nothing weird in front of me. No, but that's so. I funny. wouldn't do that. That's yeah. fucking sucks to be the guy. <laughs> that's 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 he goes, I, that's he goes, oh shit! He goes. By the way, um, he goes, I wish I would have known I was going. Uh, I wish I would have known that you were going to stay there before I paid twenty dollars to park. That's all. I don't care though. No, no, it's cool, man. I just, <laughs> just want to let you know that uh, I did miss out on the fantasy draft, but I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you had fun. Um, no, 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 I don't even care. No, 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 it's fine. No, again, we're not boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't. I, you're not my property, so I can't control what you're doing. I'm just really glad. Oh, I just want to make sure you got home safe. Did, yeah. did he get you home safe, or did he just fucking put you in an Uber like a piece shoe doesn't care about you? Yeah, we you go back to New York, or did he just fuck you first and then leave you in a pile of garbage? I hate you. You are garbage. You mean I love you. You are garbage. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it hurts. <laughs> I'm gonna go listen to Halsey. I'm bad at love. I'm bad at love. <laughs> Good, then get the hell out of my life. Who needs you? Beat it. Leave me alone. Scram. She, she's like holding a radio outside of her so, window a few hours later. Justin got her number and they started texting. And then um, I, we were like in the back. I was smoking weed about to leave. And Marty, who runs the show, comes out. And I was like, that bartender on the main floor is crazy hot. And she's like, yeah, she's single. We're from a strip club? On and the main, they're on the main stage. What are really doing it for me? But he goes, no, she's, she doesn't have a boyfriend. And I looked up her Instagram and she's like, her first picture is like the love of my life, and you're like, this, she's got a boyfriend. And you didn't like, know that. You're at that bad in love. I'm brutal, <laughs> bad in I, re- I wish we say we didn't listen to that song nine times on the ride home, but we did. Wow, I love it. I love <laughs> it. I'm, I'm in, man. I, I didn't realize you were that in nine that, times. We didn't listen to it nine, Not nine, nine times. times. No, no, no. Times. Exaggerating for effect. I believe it was nine. No, it's three. Uh, Seven. <laughs> so we... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Christine just keeps putting up a picture of Gary was, being a good dad to his other sons. Gary, Gary taught Adam and Eric how to ride a bike at the same exact time. You, oh. see, him, you see him holding two bike seats look, like behind him, like smiling oh in the middle. God. Like, I couldn't be having a better oh day. Oh, my God. Look at him dressed up as Santa. He's surprising him in bed. He was the tooth fairy. Oh, man. He won't we're a tutu to surprise him, so we. Love. So, anyways, uh, Justin, Justin breaks up that relationship. Sure. And then Marty tells thing. me, Marty tells me he's like, yeah, she doesn't have a boyfriend. Go back in there. And I'm like, we're about to leave. And I'm like, and Justin's like, she isn't the girl I want to flirt with inside. Do you want to go inside? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We got very boy excited. We got boy excited. <laughs> like, we got we're boy like, excited. We're like, <laughs> do you want to hang out? Others hang out. And so I went in, and this girl's bartending, so I can't talk to her. So I say maybe like two sentences. Why? Well, if you talk to bartender, you're just going to go, I um, can I have a Jack Daniels? And a, holy shit, it's just really, I can't say anything else to you but that. Yeah, I mean, it really is one we of those talk things. You have to order. It's so hard. Do you know how hard it is to flirt with a bartender when you don't drink? She goes, because she, she's like done, and she comes over, and she goes, so what's up? And I go, can I get a Coke? And she goes, you just want a Coke. She goes, and I was like, I have a problem. And you're, oh, and you're like, and you're like hey, I like when you're judgmental about her, too. He goes, hey, when you're done, when you're done uh, poisoning your patrons, I'd yeah. love to take you out. Somewhere. Oh, my God. Hi, sin- sinistr- sinistress of poison. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Medusa. Were you just turning men into stone with your snake hair? Um, I just want to know if you can give me a club soda, because I like bubbles. Uh, <laughs> I want carbonation. Yeah. None of the calories. The alcohol makes my eczema come out. I know, like, yeah, no, but she was like, so you don't drink. And then she was like, kind of nice about it. She's like, no, it's cool. So uh, uh, Justin was flirting with her. I talked to that bartender for a little bit and then I left and I told Marty, I was like, hey, you know, like, what? text me her name so I could follow her on Instagram because I'm a creep. And uh, Marty's like, hey, I, I talked to her real quick. Was that before? Or no, I- can I, we get in the car and we're both like kind of like like giddy excited, like two little boys. Yeah. And so we, we're like, let's celebrate the moment here by putting uh, some genuine pony on in the car. At first it was kind of like funny. We're like- We're bumping and grinding, like joking around. Well, why are you, you, this is before you go back in. No, we already went back in and we hung out and then we left. And this is when we're leaving. We're we're both, we were both home. a little like hot on the, we were both a little horny from the weekend, I think, because neither, we were sharing a hotel room, neither was jacking yeah, off. So, and, so those girls don't want to hang the, the hang with the girls was over yeah but justin did some heavy flirting uh i got a smile which for vanilla dan might as well a be a fucking smile that's over the pants <laughs> yeah but, but we're still all excited like you know she likes him and well gonna... dan just re- in the article he writes for fhm magazine <laughs> yeah. says, a smile is worth a thousand blowjobs it is that's the vanilla dan you know story a smile is worth a thousand blowjobs the dan soder story <laughs> everyone knows that a smile's an eye blowjob <laughs> on hashtag dan yeah did she suck you off um, at all he goes well 
with her eyes. I don't know. She gave me a pretty dainty handshake and a <laughs> wink. So we're like, we're like, kind of like joking around, bumping and grinding to Genuine's pony. <laughs> yeah, we were like, wait, describe in the car. Yeah, we were in the car. Like, yeah, we were like, I, I was like, you. I was like sure. pointing at the window as we drove by, like yeah. doing yeah. Body every, rolls. Uh, every commercial break here, yeah. buddy, we go for it. One hundred percent. So we're we're just doing that. We're just doing, and also the the afternoon had been spent with us planning our opening of our male strip club called Attainable Dudes. D-O-O-D-Z. Yeah, where it's Ooh. just dudes in t-shirts and Hanes <laughs> boxer briefs stripping for you. Yeah, probably like you Carl. May- got in Carl. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's one of the lead dancers. Like you may be spackling a wall and then it's like they'll call your name to go dance and you just go right yeah. from that with no transition. A guy named Leonard but they call him Len. Yeah, and all the music is out of... All <laughs> fucking uh, Len Upshaw's next. <laughs> he goes, oh, wow. He goes, cool. All the music comes out of your phone on speaker. <laughs> Into a microphone. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. You go, <laughs> I think this is gonna make you. I think it's gonna make you pretty wet. We only serve. We've only served, We only serve beer and Gatorade at yeah, the place. Beer, beer, Gatorade, and water. That's Fucking it. cans and bottles, baby. alcohol and electrolytes, baby. Yeah. Welcome to dudes. So, so we were doing some dudes dancing. <laughs> sure. On the way back. Fully understandable. And then, then Justin was like, "I was like, we, we got to stop to get a coffee because we're driving late at night, and I wanted a coffee." And I was like, Let, "Let's find a Dunkin' Donuts." And he's like, "Hey, he has Spotify." He's like, "What do you want me to put on?" I was like, "Why don't you put on some D'Angelo?" Or no, you recommended D'Angelo. I go, "Let's keep it going." with a little uh, D'Angelo's how does it feel? Yeah, and so I was like we're joking around we're like joking at first like doing like the clutching and stuff but then it for, just wait it gets, gets silent it gets silent for a good three minutes of the song and then right at this part I look over at Dan and the two of us are just like staring into the road having like private one on one sex fantasies yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you were right? you, you, was, were com- you were completely lost in fuck fantasy well we started when he when Justin called it out when Justin goes Justin just goes like this you know we've been sitting in silence for three minutes <laughs> fantasizing and I go that's exactly what I was doing I'll tell you what the was dude he's like ripping the, the steering wheel I was oh, driving <laughs> I was just driving looking at the road like oh god Allison's so gorgeous in Dan, in Dan's mind <laughs> In Dan's mind, it wasn't even fucking yet. They were both naked. She was sitting on him, yeah. but his dick, was, like, she was just sitting on his dick, not like it's not cyber. Oh. And his thumbs were in the creases oh, of her thighs. I'm getting so worked up. This is exactly the vibe that we Lou playing like, again. Like you're squeezing top yes. side ass. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, there's a lot of hand on the chest and her laughing. Totally. She oh went her, she took her God. fingers, she took her fingers through your fucking Jewish diamond dealer <laughs> hair. Your Jewish diamond dealer chest hair. Dude, Dan's got Dan's like, Biting his lower lip while he's gripping the steering wheel, I'm like this. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Dude, it was uh, Justin almost put his fat fucking dickhead through the. He almost put his fat dickhead through the glove compartment. Dude, I'll tell you this: it's one of the hardest I've laughed is when fucking Justin called it out. When Justin just goes, "We're just sitting here fantasizing," and I was like, it got so fucking weird. Where you're like, it was oh, so yeah. funny, dude. Yeah, that was one of my favorite uh, friends moments of our friendship. And then I almost buddy. killed us cutting across three lanes of traffic to get to a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh yeah, we totally lost sight of where we were going. <laughs> yeah, just we staring the into moment. the dark. Too busy fucking in your head. Oh man, <laughs> it's funny because I've been on the road with Justin before where it's gone where you, you haven't got the number. Remember that girl in Poughkeepsie? And then you kept checking your phone and you're like, ah, she's probably got the wrong number. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a real bummer. Yeah. <laughs> bummer. But you know what? was a different you, vibe you were, of a car ride. But you weren't like single. Like, you weren't single at that time. So, yeah. like, there's no way, there's no possibility for us to kind of do it together. Yeah. I was just in a vanilla <laughs> dreamland. But this, man, I don't think anything beat this fantasy right here. Oh, girl. Let me guess what Justin was doing. You were looking in a mirror and there was a girl's back of her head covering your dick. Sure. And you were just banging out a ton of different poses. You got me, baby. <laughs> Atlas. Angle. <laughs> he goes Hulkster. <laughs> like, like American yeah. Psycho. Virtually identical. Yeah, I mean wow. that angle on Michelle and Woe Vicky. It is crazy. <laughs> well, oh man. We let so the what, woo out. What Marty and I, were, dude, I, I, yeah, I, in Justin's fantasy, he was blowing D'Angelo <laughs> <laughs> below below the screen. I was um, oh. while he's doing oh, this, God. he's holding his head. Oh, oh, uh, oh she was asking for the girls Insta. Oh, she's uh, hot. Oh, you you got her Insta? Not the one that the one that like Justin. No, the one that. Uh, the one that likes Dan's is more impressive. The one that, that, Mar- is, the one that did she Mar- like you? Uh, she just followed me back, but there was she doesn't like me. How do you know? 
because the DMs don't know stupid, it. Uh, whatever. Stupid fucking idiot. <laughs> well, fuck fucking some idiot. moron doesn't even know what thing doesn't that, deserve anything. But Justin got in the car and I told him what I was doing for the last 30 minutes, which goes back to the dildo bike episode. Yeah. But I was writing, I said that this girl was so hot that it was like, um, mm -mm. Uh, it was like a, uh, a Springsteen song. <laughs> oh, this was fun. She was bartending under a comedy show. And I took her away from Chicopee. <laughs> Me and Marty were just doing shitty. Uh, Passing through Rhode Island. She ain't with Marty Caproni. She loved my Winnie the Pooh. I liked the way that she poured a shot. But she didn't like me, so the road's my only woman again. <laughs> I can tell by the walls that the other six days a week this place is a VFW. <laughs> <laughs> In my hometown, this easily can support her. She has to have another source of income. There's never been a black yeah. through these front doors. She's not a whore. And I'm going Queens. And I'm Queenless. <laughs> Wanna take her away to Astoria? <laughs> Do you like Greek food, baby? That ain't hers. Go back. Then I out. left and thought about Go to the back one. The in her <laughs> mouth. While Justin was there next to me. Mentally beating off too. Then we shot our brain loads. <laughs> and then we got some Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> we shot our Sorry. brain loads. I like brain loads. Yeah, yeah she, she is hot. She That right there is great. I don't know if it's going to uh, make me fuck a steering wheel, but she's hot. Well, Her? Yeah, she's yeah, yeah nice. but after three days in a hotel room, no J. Owen, and thinking about dudes. Yeah. Our strip club, we were in the, we were just in a vibe. Neither one of you guys jerked it, huh? I, nope. I didn't. Did you? No. Nope. There were plenty of times I went to why the gym. You guys you not, the why would you guys not look at each other at all? I'm looking at you. No, Dan, now. That, I, I mean, don't get I think your instincts. I said you guys jerk off. Uh, you guys looking at her Instagram. She's got her Instagram. Up. Sure. I have no trouble. You're trying to blame looking at those pictures for the boner you're getting. Thinking about when you and Justin jerk <laughs> off in go, front of each other. I go like this. I go. I go. Hey, Justin, welcome to the Grand Royal Rumble. Who's gonna toss first? <laughs> I wanted her to kiss my mouth to get the gay off my lips. She had a big she was a room. My, she was my chickabee beard. <laughs> And I need, I need a road beard. I, got, I travel with a squatty potty. I need a road beard. And a handsome man. And a handsome man. Can you please I, I was, watch TV in the lobby? <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm done. I was upset the to know. on the door. Oh, was wow. a little man. She is hot. Fuck she is hot. I was upset to know you didn't want to... You, you you want to fuck Dave, uh, Dave Smith before me? Oh yeah, so the bums the, the shit out of me. <laughs> so the, uh, what? Yeah, that, on bonfire live from Austin. <laughs> that what? Fucking disguise. Oh, oh, oh yes, yeah, the questions. Yeah, yeah. I, but I said you. I mean, I know you did, Jay. I said you. I know you did. Get over it. No, Jeez. let's spice I'm up not over it yet. Man, this girl's a real whore. I'm gonna huh? hold a radio outside of your apartment. <laughs> this girl's got a lot of hoary pictures, huh? <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be a real pig for a VFW uh, bartender. <laughs> I don't think these are hoary. She doesn't have to do a lot of like uh, black Lou's, ass shots. Black, black, right. Lou, black Lou's on my team, right? Black Lou. Oh, that she's, she's hot. She's, yeah, she's who's on your team? She's great You're not on my oh, team. Oh, this pig. This, um, dude, Justin I can't Silver. The show's over. Justin Silver. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Dude, Beastmaster. Love hanging out with you guys. Uh, make Neurotica sure you check out podcast. And also, he's going to be at Uncle Vinny's May 17th through the 19th. Thank you. And you can check him out at Levity Live May 9th. Yeah, just go on my on my social media. It's at I am Justin Silver. Uh, Caroline's this weekend. Hell yeah! Let's come out. Fucking get tickets. Thursday go pick through Sunday. For tickets there, Dan Stoner, of course. Go to danstoner.com for all of his tour dates. And bigjcomedy.com. We'll see you guys at the Bonfire, and SXM, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Be sure. We love you. We'll see you. We'll to talk listen to tomorrow. tomorrow and follow us on WJNK, the j, -J junk of New York. The O. <laughs>
only radio station blasting you in the veins. So <laughs> <laughs> music so good, you'll want to boot it right into your neck. You're, you're gonna itch when it's gone. <laughs> you want the only rock hits that make you feel like there's spiders under your skin, then you've reached the junk. WJNK, no, 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 New York. The junk. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. It's a bonfire.